Our heroes, having narrowly survived a harrowing attack during the night by what seemed to be fanatics of the Silent One, with their horrific alterations of their bodies, turning their very arms into deadly weapons, spawning more terrors from the very shadows. Just when all seemed lost, Mavli, Nona, Edie, Lee, and Sudi found themselves badly injured and sitting beside a campfire they did not build. Confused and disoriented, they tried to make sense of what was happening. Meanwhile, Quinn and Wid experienced troubling experiences of their own. Wow, I used experience twice in the same sentence. Quinn, with something of a recurrence or continuation of her previous troubling dreams, experienced the Silent One cutting off Quinn's own finger and feeding it to her, only to wake with the Silent One kneeling before her, a bloody stump where her finger used to be. Eventually, Quinn and Wid decided to seek out the rest of their compatriots. Quinn followed the path, backtracking, while Wid shifted her form into that of a small bat and flew above the tree line of the roaming forest. What Wid saw above the tree line were giant orb-like castles made of crystal to the far east, affixed to orange mountains and mountain-sized trees by giant webs of gl glistening silk. To the north, the trees changed color from orange and yellow to dark shades of blue. Through, though the colors themselves almost seemed to fluctuate with the ghostly lights in the sky. Many miles to the north, swirling dark red clouds emit baleful flashes of lightning. Reuniting with the rest of the group after what seemed to be mere minutes, where there should have been several hours of distance between them. Tensions here were high around the campfire as the group realized they were once again near the base of the massive white leafless tree, hanging from its branches at about eye level beside the path, a mutilated gnome. Exhausted, injured, and emotionally drained, the group once again tried to rest and once again found themselves plagued by deeply unsettling dreams while Sudi and Quinn talked of Quinn's dreams about the gnome hanging from the tree mere paces away, gently swaying and creaking with the unsettling breath-like breeze. Can our heroes endure the trials to come? Will the team's resolve hold up? Will odds roll in their favor? Fear the strangers in your midst. Never play games of fate. And I believe we left off at the end of a long rest. The party gradually comes to wakefulness, realizing that everybody had fallen asleep. Sudi and Quinn, you are probably the last ones to wake up. I'll let you guys decide who wakes up first. But when you wake up, you glance around the camp. The fire has long since burned out. And you see that strewn about the camp are what appears to be rations. However, maggots, flies, and other crawling creatures make their way busily through your partially, sorry, carefully preserved rations. Now appear to be rotten and mostly spoiled. So do we still have the rations that are in our packs? No. All if done. you if you rifle through your pack and look for your rations, you'll see that all of your rations have been strewn about the camp and are now rotten and infested with maggots and flies. 
Uh, Wood will start collecting the maggots because she knows they're edible. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a survival roll, please, Wid. Can I help? Sure. You're proficient with survival, correct? Um, got a seven. <laughs> no, I was just going to do it as well. Okay, sure. But she's groggy. Sudi's proficient in survival, too. Sudi probably so, regularly eats maggots. <laughs> right, so, so what I'll do is I'll have either Kess roll at advantage or one of the rest of you roll survival. I, I just did. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, I got a 21. Okay, with the 21, um, you are able to scrounge up enough partially spoiled rations or somewhat edible maggots, or at least will be edible for maybe a day before they, you know, um, cocoon, I guess that's what maggots do, right? And then hatch. Sure. Um, you managed to salvage a third of the total ration amount for the group. So what was the total amount? How yeah, much I don't know. So two remaining. I had four left. Your wit had four left. I had two. Is anyone keeping track of this? Because I can't keep track of this. Yeah, in my I head. got it. If we roughly had an average of three, then that would mean that we would each roughly have one left. I don't think I had any at this point. Oh yeah, you, uh, cause I was trying to share with you last time. Did you take Lee's? Nope. Um, well, that wouldn't have changed the average either. No, that was a joke. Oh. <laughs> um, Sudi, Sudi and Quinn, you two are the last to wake up. Um, when you do so, and you come to the realization that you had fallen asleep on your watch and this food had been destroyed, essentially. Um, both of you suffer 15 stress damage. How many um, other rations appeared? Uh, you said there were new rations that appeared? Like out no. of nowhere? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. No, what, what you did was you like scrape off the rotten bits or collect enough uh, edible maggots to replace a third of your total, so four total rations. Gotcha, thanks. That's great. So only four people can rest next time unless we find more food. I mean, should we leave anything out there and attract more bugs? Maybe we can at least eat those. Have you, have, has anyone seen bugs other than on rotting things? Z, have I seen any bugs other than on rotting things? You haven't really been looking for them. So probably not. I mean, like, I feel like there are certain, there's been certain times where we've noticed that there are, there's just an absence of life. Yes, there, there has been largely an absence of life. However, you have seen um, miscellaneous carrion, like, for example, the gnome had maggots crawling through its body. We probably, sh I don't want to eat the gnome maggots. Let's just not eat. Can we can we agree to not eat the no maggots? We could no. desperate. We can just go off the path and then we can eat them. I mean, or the gnome. Pass it to someone else who might want it. 
Wait, didn't you say that you can make berries? Those usually are for medicinal purposes. Uh, but I can at the very least provide us with water. Um, out of game, is it is good berry changed now? No, it's the same. Because each berry contains enough to fill, like um, that is, it, that is it replaces a ra- like a full day's worth of rations. That is correct, but Nona does not know that. Okay. Wood has only used them for medicinal purposes. Would Edie have noticed that feeling since Wood gave her um, some good berries last time? Um, they were surprisingly filling. You would notice that after having eaten the good berry that you did, that that you did not feel hungry. I think it, it we're going to get to a point where we're... Uh, pretty much feeling like crap anyway so the good berry might be good for upset stomachs when we're starting to hurt okay yeah, yeah with those those berries you made that um they helped definitely more than than just medicinal purposes as well i will try to reserve my energy then to make berries and water for all of us much appreciated and if there's anything i could do to help and and if there's anything I can do to help, uh, let me know. So, do we have any new strategies other than walking forwards? Stay together. What do we have other than just going forward? Well, the note said it was a test of patience, so if we leave the path, we run in a, I don't even know what, and we end up back at the start. Mm-hmm. So. Judy climbs to her feet. Before we go, I, Quinn was going to look at the gnome. Are you sure we should be messing with the gnome? I feel like that's just inviting more. It is a gnome. She is a gnome. She knows about these things. I mean, who am I to get in in the way of gnome business? Gnomes? I'm one of those. Cleary was saying that you wanted to maybe pay your respects to the gnome? I do. I I think that would be a good idea. Um, I I feel bad we didn't do it sooner. Well, we'll see him on the way out. I mean, he's right there. It's all right. I mean, there's just kids about to be, you know, sliced open and their bodies sacrificed to release an entire new pantheon of deities or some weird ass shit. That's cool. Not a problem. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. No, no, by all means, let's do this. Where, where's the gnome? How close is he? See? <laughs> Wait, Madly, we didn't put, uh, we put Sister Cavern's Hall to rest best we could, but we didn't fully put her to rest as we should. And she showed up and attacked us. How do we know that this gnome won't come back and attack us if we don't put him to rest too? He has no legs. What can he do? You never know. Take him down. So he's uh hasn't messed with us as yet. So there's always that. Yet being the key word. Um, the gnome is most certainly dead. So will Sister Cavern's fall. Yeah. Madly, you're totally right. If you think we should wait, um, we can wait. Nope, by all means. Uh, I don't think we should bury the gnome, though. I mean, we're a little rationless. <laughs> we're not eating the gnome. There's nothing left to eat. Say that! I didn't, I did not say that. 
Nobody said we're eating the gnome. You just said we're not burying him. Yeah, have we burn him and purify him with fire? Were you saying you wanted to use him to collect more maggots? Is that what you meant, Matthew? Yes. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm, I don't know if I'm that excited to eat maggots. I'm, we would be excited to eat maggots. Another maggot? I don't know. Are they tasty? No. I heard you can eat them, though. Perhaps if we prepared them, it might make it a little more feasible for us. Maybe we can roast them over a fire or something. Mm -hmm. When many maggots children starve. I don't know if I know about that one. That's, that's, a, that's a new saying for me. She does make a point, though. If we only have three or four rations, do we save them for when we find the kids? Or do we keep them for ourselves? Um, if we shut down, then I fear that there won't be any, be any kids to save. Plus, water does go a longer way. I think it will take us some time to get there. We can see how well we do on my berries at first. And if we need to dip into the rations, we can do that. I think they may spoil within the day though. So perhaps we could see if there's a way to, maybe cooking them might help them last longer if we intend to keep them with us. But also, you know, they seem to be dwindling. So I'd be afraid if we hold on to them what if we lost them later? Does anyone have anything to cook with? I mean... Maybe we could use the shield? We put things inside the shield the like a bowl? I was thinking the shield, but I think maybe... Um, is anyone wearing plate mail? Nobody is wearing plate. Okay. Well, that's a good thought. Um, how big are these maggots, Z? Normal sized. Well, because there's like, there's like this kind, there's like this kind, and then there's like rice sized. Um, I'd, I'd say we'll find a middle ground and say they're somewhere in between. Okay. So like, like, size? like a caterpillar. Smaller, but yeah. Smaller than this? Like mealworm size. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Got it. Um, so can't roast them on my chain mail. I have a tinder box, but I don't think that's made out of metal. We have a flat rock. Perhaps we could heat it up. Mm. Unless we wanted to put them in the shields Unless and then light a fire underneath. That feels very sacrilegious. I have salt to hide the flavor. I mean, the way I see it, those shields were made to protect and as as much as I wouldn't want to use them for that purpose, I mean, cooking. What about my helmet? Something to eat to save lives. What about my helmet? Maybe. Does anybody have one? I have a helmet. It's um, a wondrous item, but I use my bell as a bowl. Well, we can just store them in my tinderbox until we get until we actually make a fire later. 
No ratifier now. It's, we'd have to build it up again. It's out now, right? Oh, I didn't catch that. Is it completely out? It, it burned out over the night, yeah. Okay. Should we at least take way? some of the stones with us? Or, or something's from the campsite before we head out? Couldn't hurt. I mean, got more room in my bag since we're running low on supplies, so I could take a few. I'll take some too, so you're not stuck here in all of them. What are we using the stones for? Well, uh, Wood said before, uh, maybe putting the uh, little critters on on a stone, heating that up. Mm. We could also use it to build up another uh, pyre when we stop again. Could use it to fortify some defenses, choke them at people if we run into the silent one again. Rocks are pretty useful. I wouldn't yeah. take a few, at least. We can always remove them later if it makes sense to. Sure. Plus, the ground is wet in many of these areas, so. That's, that's true. How these fires will be looking later. I don't know if there's a rock in D&D Beyond. <laughs> I'm gonna look. <laughs> uh, that's a good rock. question. It, I think it would just be like an improvised weapon. Stone, work stone, stone of luck, lot stone. No, I want a stone of luck, but I don't have a stone of luck. I do have a lantern that I used Sudi's uh, tinderbox to light, and I'm holding it up to the little gnomey friend. What kind of geologist, shouldn't we be more specific than rock? <laughs> You did get the mud call out earlier, huh? I'm <laughs> so from from beneath Mavly's traveling cloak, she produces an old bronze lantern, worn with age and tarnished, and containing a small black candle. Um, before the flame touches the wick, it flashes to life burning with an eternal emerald flame. Green, I wasn't expecting that. This is exciting. Speaking low and incomprehensibly, this flame's light grew and grew, casting hideous green, casting a hideous green glow in a wide radius around Mavly. The flickering light throws writhing shadows that dance around the pale leafless tree and the pale bark seems to undulate like flesh. May have made Moments it later, an ethereal swirling figure descends toward the hanged gnome, pulling itself on broken limbs down the length of the rope, pushing itself down into the gnome's mouth, seeping through the gaps in teeth filed to points, past the remains of the tongue which had been cut out and into the now convulsing body. Oh, I didn't expect to ever see that happen backwards. The sanity of the onlookers was called into question. Who is watching? Dude is watching. I'm <laughs> watching. With the weapon ready. <laughs> Someone shoot that damn thing. He's watching horrified. Lee would be watching if other people drew her attention in terms of the direction you guys are looking because she's a little groggy. Yeah, we didn't realize, well, I didn't realize the people were over there, but if that's where the group is, she would be there as well. Okay. In that case, I need everybody oh, to make a sanity saving throw. As I understand, the, the hanging gnome is only about like 10 or 15 feet away, right? From the fire? Yeah, about more like 30, but yeah. 
I've never seen the message that says D and D Beyond dice ten. mode. Roll my Hang on, I also up, got a ten. I'm looking up the magic item here. Same, another ten. Nineteen. I'm excited. Five. Let's slide under that with a seven. <laughs> okay, those of you who rolled below a fifteen, <laughs> below a fifteen. You take 10 stress damage and begin to shake, vomit, or cry unexpectedly. Sudi's crying. I'll vomit. <laughs> Sudi's shaking and frozen. Lee's shaking as well. Uh, Madly, on the other hand, doesn't appear to be phased. Of course not. I let it. I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh. Maybe if you light it, it's not as bad, but I wasn't expecting the green. I don't know. Uh, this was Sulan's, and uh, the horned one is a little fucked up, I guess. As you, as you watch the corpse with a morbid fascination, its jaw pops, oh. and it begins to sing. Madly, get away from there. <laughs> <laughs> Nona, are you, wipe your face, babe. It says... I'm None who a... seek shall ever find it. Those who find it cannot leave. Welcome to the roaming forest. It's found you within its reach. Rejoice, for now you're in its presence. Dance and dance. Be oh so free. Try and fight and you will find the hangman's noose soon, just like me. My God, it's like a carnival gnome. He's so happy. Ah! <laughs> Lee rubs her eyes and looks confused. I'm gonna look over at Quinn. I didn't think it could get more fucked up. It's yeah, more fucked up. Fun. <laughs> oh, fun is, you know, euphemism. And, uh, the, and the gnome's eyes, what remains of them, seem to look at Mavly. Hi. Mavly, get a wick. Can you walk? Can you, Mavly, can you come over here? No, Please. I'm really, it, this is fascinating. I'm going to take us a couple of steps closer to the gnome. Okay. What happened to you? Pulo, Pulo is my name, born out of song and stories gained. I've traveled far, I've traveled wide. I was sent here and then I died. Who sent you? You don't seem to get a response from that. What were you looking for? Again. Maybe I don't get, like, do I only get like two questions? Anybody have any suggestions? Can I ask the, if we can help him? The figure is still animated. It's writhing in pain, but somehow it seems to be enjoying the experience. Okay. Uh, what? Did, Quinn, ask it again. See if it works if you're not holding the lantern. Can we help you? Follow the path to where it goes. Follow the path and then you'll know. You left a week and a half ago. If you seek him, then you'll know. You'll catch the children. They are slow. That's very specific. Uh, how, how long ago did the children walk by? Was it a week and a half ago? <laughs> write that down, write that down. Um see what would he say to that guess is as good as mine my friend <laughs> i'm just excited that he rhymes i am also very excited he <laughs> rhymes i i think it, it would re it would repeat the phrase uh follow the path to where it goes follow the path and then you'll know you left a week and a half ago if you seek him then you'll know you'll catch the children they are I slow see. Well, that's encouraging, but at the front, it mentioned patience. Mm. 
The roaming forest never sleeps. It travels, journeys indiscreet. You roam within, you leave the path. You'll find yourself at the gate you last. You'll find yourself back at the place. You'll find yourself back at this gate. Oh, so you're like the, the gatekeeper for this part. How unfortunate. What happened to your legs? And are you edible? <laughs> uh, I don't think there would be a reply to that. <laughs> okay. Change in expression or just like, what is the facial expression showing? He is writhing in pain, but seems to be enjoying it. So no change in reaction according to what we're saying at all? Um, not specific reactions to what you're saying, no. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look over at, at Quinn again and be like, uh, are we, what do we do next? Um, Lolo, the blade is cursed. Do you want me to take it out? Mm, I don't think there's a reply for that. Is like it having an NPC that only responds to certain things, and we have to figure out how to trigger all of his talking points. Uh, uh, well, anybody else have any questions or suggestions? Because I had Did to you? write rhymes for specific questions that I thought you might ask. <laughs> And I then mean, if you don't write, if you don't ask those questions. <laughs> we're kind of screwed. Um, what, Z is not like a natural bard? Did you know this was going to happen, Mavli? It's Sulan's lantern. Do you think I just went up to the horned one and was like, hey, what's that brass thing? No. He uh, whispered um, to the sword because she's holding it at this point and just asks, do you know anything of this? The sword responds in your mind. I am not aware of this thing. <laughs> Honestly, I thought it would be a really relatively easy way to, you know, move some fire from point A to point B. Since, you know, we need to get a move on. But then it was green, which is kind of cool. But I mean, then you all kind of cool. threw up, which is less cool. Yep, my, my throw up is exactly the same color green. And... Um, that's unfortunate. I didn't eat anything that color. Interesting. Do you normally technicolor bar? No, you know what? I have questions for the gnome, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Maybe, so what can we ask him about the silent one? Maybe he might know. Who am I seeking, gnomey friend? Like if, if we seek him, then, then we'll know. What are we going to know if we seek him? Ye shall pass three nights chagrin before ye reach the one who is him. Do not turn around or you will find yourself here quite soon. Should you leave the path, you'll meet the silent faithful. The clay hag and her dolls above all. Beyond great gates, you will find your fates. Trust not all for one here betrays. The other will betray and wake him. It is your fate. Oh, that's bad. I feel like that's like, like one person tells the truth and the other one lies and I almost can figure it out now. <laughs> um, My Nomi friend, do you like big butts and can you lie? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're gonna ride for that. Was this 15 stress damage? <laughs> it was 15, yeah. Okay. Do you want it to hurt more? Make it hurt more just like before. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Yeah, that one. No, no, this one's broken. You think? What happens if we take the dagger out, do you think? 
<clears throat> Could you uh, ask it? No, you can. It just rhymes at me and I have trouble keeping track of what it's saying because I'm listening to the cadence instead of the words. <laughs> um, um, did he say his name was Polly? Polo. Po Polo? Polo? Polo. P-U-L-L-O. Polo. Polo. What, what's up with your, so, with your dagger? What? Do you do you want it taken out and then put it back in? Uh, no response. Okay. Try turning it off and back on again. <laughs> um, you mentioned a betrayal. Can you at least say who? The world is your nest. You'll soon find much rest. Only four will arrive, and shortly after, you will die. Knife in the back by one who is near, and with some new friends, you'll persevere. A dragonborn, a madman woes. For the other nine leagues below, a trial of patience awaits, as worms await your fate, as he awaits your fate. So is our fate directly tied to him, I assume? No. Probably. Okay, there was a lot in that little There's snippet, a lot. I feel like. Yes, I feel there, like there was, was a lot definitely there. a lot. Okay, one betray, but also only four people will make it through, but also will be able to catch up with the children, but also a dragonborn. But what if there's only four people needed to like awaken and that's what they mean. Is anyone writing this down? I sure tried, but Z rhymes real fast. He's like- Z does like, rhyme real fast. Rapper. Making some notes and notability to where I can like go back and see the part by clicking on a note because I can't finish the note, but I can go back to it. I can share those later if anybody needs them. Yes, please. I, I can send you guys the text. Yes, please. For that, that'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what's gonna happen to the children? Hello? Something delightful, perhaps, things you'll hear. The spider's silk, the giant's near. Of unicorns and so much more, and vile drow with death galore. Ooh, ooh, I got a, a new one. Um, wow, okay. Hello, is there any way to, to get out? Follow the path to where it goes. Follow the path and then you'll know. I mean, yeah, we saw that one coming. Yeah, I mean, like, is there any way to defeat the unnamed god? I don't think there would be a reply to that. Yeah, okay. It was worth a shot. How can we seek him? Can you expand on that? I think it is. <laughs> ye shall pass three night chagrin before ye reach the one who is him. Do not turn around or you will find yourself here quite soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. How many how many places beyond this realm before we get to him? Mm, I don't think Polo knows. How Polo, you're far did you get? Sorry, go ahead, Natalie. No, you're totally fine. I was just being grumbly, Edie. I'm glad that you're amazing. Appreciate you. Go ahead. Ask him again. Ask him again. 
uh, how far ahead in your journey did you get before the well? I've traveled far, I've traveled wide. I was sent here and then I died. How long ago were you sent? Uh, no answer. Has someone asked what killed him? It's I pretty think, clear what killed him. I think we did ask about how he died and he didn't say anything. Or, or maybe it was the I was sent here and then I died thing mm -hmm. again. It, it's also pretty clear how he died. He was hanged and then ritually mutilated. I mean, uh, right, but like, was the Hey, hey, Polo, is it night like night and day or night like a chivalrous night? Uh, ooh, good yeah, question. Yeah, no answer, <clears throat> no answer to that one. Because I'm, you know, a lot of, a lot of folly and chagrin and embarrassment could potentially happen. And I'm pretty sure that uh, we, we, we dealt with a little bit of that already. Here, let me... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try to copy paste this text here so you guys can have that. Um, that that is actually all of the text that I had prepared for Polo. Okay. So, okay. Cool. So yeah, you've gotten everything from Polo. Thanks. Uh, We're completionist gamers. <laughs> all of the options are now grayed out. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone through the dialogue and clicked again. And clicked again. Face bar, face bar. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we're going to pump him for more information. Tell me you like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't want you to keep banging your heads against a wall. I appreciate that. Thank you. What Z really wants is for us not to be in the roaming forest for 32 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're session 12. Here we go. Okay, okay. so... So, so, uh, and I'm going to kind of swing the lantern around a little bit and look at the rest of the group. What do I do now? Could I roll like Arcana to see if I know that the lantern was the thing that did this? Oh, it's pretty clear. Or like what the, the, like the purpose of the lantern is? Uh, I don't think you need to roll Arcana for that. It's it's pretty clear that the the lantern is facilitating a very twisted, painful sort of speak with the dead. Um, um, maybe just try blow it out. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Does that's amazing. <laughs> you, you blew it out? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um, he continues to writhe in agony and laughter, seeming ecstasy, um, even after the candle has gone out. Now do we cut him down and try and give him some rest or take out the dagger or something? Maybe we should light it again. Maybe that gives us some sort of control over this spirit. I thought that when I drank uh, him, um, you're a sadist. I had no idea. <laughs> it's still going. No, the, the you 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 successfully blew it out. I mean, the spirit's still going. Right. There's all I of mean, the text. Hey, yay! Thanks. I'm excited. Oh my God, there's so much. Par pardon my shitty rhymes. <laughs> oh, your shitty rhymes are the best. Amazing. <laughs> Hello. I mean, I'm down for whatever. Do you want the lantern, Nona? And I will just. Open. I don't want to touch that infernal thing. Thank you. Um, you sure? You seem fascinated. 
I just, you know what? I don't even have to, I don't even have to explain myself to you. I I think, but you sure ask other people an awful lot of questions. It's true. I'm naturally curious. Yeah, me too. So why don't you want it? I mean, infernal is kind of weird. It's not like your God isn't judgy. Or, Which God you know, do you worship again? I yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't worship any God. Is it still I, writhing in pain right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe if we light it again, we can make it go away instead of having to do with it. Okay. Why do you want me to do it? So we put the dream spirit back into the lantern? I have a tinderbox here. She gives you... What's a dream spirit? What? The form that entered the gnome. Do you have something like this in your... Culture? Worship? No, but what else could it be? A ghost? What's the difference between a ghost and a dream spirit asking for a friend? I've never heard of a dream spirit, not gonna lie. Not sure what a ghost is. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to explain that right now. Um... It's like they're trying to speak to me. I know it. (laughs) Okay, so you will want us to relight the lantern to see if the gnome stops writhing in pain. We can somehow banish it. If it brought, if the lantern brought it here, then maybe the lantern can banish it away. I will relight the lantern. Right. Are you, there instructions on the lantern, Mavli? Yeah. Does it come with a pamphlet? You relight the lantern. The it lights back up with the green light. He's still writhing, screaming in agony, and moaning in ecstasy. See, it's getting a little I, creepy now. Yeah. I keep uh, trying to tell you guys. In my dream, I felt like. My dream was telling me that he wouldn't find any peace while the dagger was still in his chest. Oh. But y'all grandmas don't want to listen to me. I he goes over and you got the dagger. I am just an asshole, Quinn, and I missed that utterly and completely because I'm feeling defensive around Nona lately a lot, so I apologize. But uh, all the dreams are really messed up, so I can't know if that's right. Sudi is already yanking. Sudi Sudi already already out. Out. <laughs> Thanks, Sudi. Um, do you wish to inspect the lantern? Sure. Okay, make an investigation roll. I'm excited. Oh, that's real bad. Oh. What happens when Sudi pulls out the dagger? Nothing. Okay. She puts I, the I dagger mean, just, up next to the lantern. Yeah, just the, the standard continuation of writhing in agony and with a 10. So with the 10, um, that's an average difficulty. Um, you do notice that there is an inscription scrawled on the um, bottom section of the lantern. What's it? What's it? What language I'll is read it? I, I know Dwarven and Common. Uh, it is not in Dwarven or Common. Do I recognize it? I've, I've, I've carved a lot of languages in my life. She has carved a lot of languages. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think you would probably recognize it. Um, this is Draconic. Oh, somebody knows that. It's Sudi. Sudi can Sudi sound knows. it out. Hey, uh, do I, do, uh, anybody? Sudi is standing draconic? right next to you, trying to get the spirit it, from the dagger into the lantern. <laughs> oh, so Sudi's pulled out the dagger and is now trying to stab the lantern. Hey, can you, ah, wait, the, okay, sharp and pointy. Can you read this? <laughs> Sudi looks at it, and what does it say? Um, it, it appears to be In the, instructions. Well, she can't how, read the words, only the letters. 
I, I don't understand. <laughs> she's not fluent can read in it. the draconic language. She's fluent in the draconic script. She only knows the language a little bit. Oh, okay. So it it is most certainly draconic script. Um, and you said you don't know the language, but you know the letters. She knows some basic words, but mostly yeah. just the letters. Okay, okay. It it looks. I, I think. Make make a history roll. We'll, we'll leave it to the dice. Oh, I'm excited. Two. Oh, no. Ah. You have no idea. <laughs> you uh, recognize the letters city? as draconic. I'm looking at Sudi. I kind of see her face like fall a little bit, and I'm going to turn to Lee. Lee. There's words. I don't speak but I think, you wanna, could you do the wavy? It's like having a translator, but it's magic. Everything is, you know, we're going to get out of this whole weird realm and I'm going to miss some of this. Why? Judy reads it out to you and it sounds like gibberish. Lee kind of shuffles in here as she's been kind of standing along the side and asks the sword, can you make sense of this at least? Okay, yeah, the the sword is able to read it and it says, these appear to be the directions on how to properly use this magical lantern. Oh. Perhaps you could share those directions on how to use the magical lantern with me? One moment while I pull up the item. Madly, it's on your sheet, right? No. <laughs> I've been looking, and it's not. I have the oh, candle. It's still in mine. Oh, I should have looked on. Quinn. Oh, it's still on Quinn's. Okay, yeah, I'll pull it up. Okay, I didn't think to go to somebody else's character sheet. I keep forgetting we can. Do uh, it. I don't think you'd be able to read it anyway. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we can look at other people's inventories. Okay, so the first phrase. The, the sword reads to you, it says, the command phrase, in order to use this item properly, you must repeat the phrase, soul of the fallen, I compel you to return, soul of the lost, return to this vessel, grant me your wisdom, grant me your thoughts, and I might free you from this torment. Wow, you got to work without doing all that. The conclusion to end <laughs> this spell properly, one must utter the phrase, I release you. Are you sharing this with us, Lee? Um, Lee kind of stumbles over her words and, and kind of puts some blank in it kind of in the middle, but tries to repeat it out and then uh, ask the sword once more to repeat and then does it again a second time slightly more accurately. Um, and Z, can you clarify um, the phrase I release you? Can you repeat what that purpose was for? I missed part of that. To, to end the, the suffering of the dead individual. Oh, okay. To release the does spirit, to be the suffering spirit from their body. In Draconic? Yes. Well, the sword says we can release the spirit by saying I release you in Draconic, which I don't really know, so I can only kind of sort of maybe somebody else should hold the sword. Uh, the the sword will tell you how to say said phrase. Yeah, but Lee's not very comfortable with foreign languages. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. So she's partially just saying, does anyone maybe someone else? I'm not I have to be the person holding the lantern who says it, right? Did she, did Lee try to say it at all? Because Sudi said the whole thing while she was reading it off. She just didn't know what it was. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't say, it didn't seem to have any effect. <laughs> Lee well, said it in common um, and said it was in Draconic and said it was hard, essentially. <laughs> uh, well, Mavly definitely, okay, I release you below. But I think it's broken. <laughs> um, when, yeah, so when Mavly repeats that phrase, um, the light 
from the candle expunges itself and the forest returns to its uneasy hum, free from the spirit she'd sought to converse with. The soul of the gnome, gray and smoking, clawed desperately at the corpse as it was pulled unwillingly into the glimmering stars above. Oh, oh I don't think he wanted to go. Now he is beyond the sun. You know, Sudi, someday we're going to need to sit down and have a conversation about, I have so many questions uh, about these, the, the dream the, and sun go, and the dots, so many, but after we have the kids back, maybe. Uh, would be Sudi good. turns and hands the dagger to Quinn. Actually, could I look at that? Sudi pauses and glances at Quinn as if for her permission. Sure. She hands it to Nona Ellie. Um, can I can I examine it and see if there's anything on it? Like the dagger? Any... Yeah. Um, make, I'll let you choose either Arcana or Investigation. They're the same. So, so tell me which one you're rolling. Um, I guess Arcana. Okay. That's an 11. I don't think you would notice anything standing out about the dagger. All right. Well. Can I try to look further at the paper or the skin or whatever was holding, um, was in between the dagger and the body? Yeah, the note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the note appears to be written on a piece of leather which reasonable um, conclusions would tell you that this is gnome skin. Possibly Polo's own. Like calf skin, soft, <laughs> smooth. It doesn't look like professionally tanned or anything. It's kind of you know, like it was carved from his flesh and then the inscription scrawled on it and then staked there. Do I understand what's written on there? Uh, yeah, I believe, I believe I gave you the note already. I will double check. We didn't look at it before, and I don't think I looked up close when I dreamed of it. Right. Okay, so the note says, I have to find where I put it. I remember you read it. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I wasn't expecting you to. Okay, here we go. The note says, a trial of patience awaits you yet, do you seek him? And it's written in Infernal. Okay, thank you. which comes out to something along the lines of e zruid eo ezulti suiz haf dohya the hafwik ma. Awesome. So I, I wouldn't then have understood it. Um, it was translated for you guys earlier by the sword. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
We at least know the meaning. Yeah, and you certainly heard the phrase to Hofwick Ma a few times. Seems like we just have to seek him. I don't, I don't even know what that means, but I'm certainly hearing that a lot in all different kinds of ways. Is he the one who took the children? He's the one that the children are going to release. Then why would we seek him? Because that's where they're taking the children. Following the, the clues, I guess. I don't know. Seems like I don't know if we'll be able to find them otherwise. Yeah, sounds like we should probably get to our first night. We have to survive. Okay, so we have to survive three nights in on this trail without anyone falling asleep on watch, because I feel like that's the most that's the most vulnerable we are, and that's when we. Because last time, when we were, well, well, we thought we were fighting. I don't think that's what the three knights means. You don't? I, no. Z, what do you think? You said a three night chagrin, right? Is that how you Three knights of chagrin before you reach the one who is him. Okay, I had to look that up, but that means like embarrassment. Embarrassment. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, um, and bear it. Not speaking as the in thinking loud right now, but um, uh, now I'm. Uh, perhaps does it truly mean three nights of rest? I mean, time doesn't really. There's no time here that we can measure. I mean, there is, but there isn't. It My guess would be. The description that I was going for with chagrin is more distress. I, I think I think it means three nights of embarrassment and awfulness and uh, things that we have to deal with. And we've done, what, two since we walked through the gate? So I guess just one more night if we continue the path. I guess we'll find him. I think. I find don't know. Children. I'm not one for brutals. This is new. What if? What if maybe the three nights means that there are three nights ahead of us? That's what I was thinking. Like three more uninterrupted nights. Why uninterrupted, though? I don't. Like uninterrupted, as in we don't go off the path. Oh, um, and I feel like the only way to not go off the path is for everyone to, for nobody to fall asleep on watch. Well, why would we take watch if we're just moving or if we're not sleeping? Why would we stop? Well, we're going to have to stop eventually. Do you count a night when we stop? Then we can just stop short. And that is a night? I feel like maybe they would think that was cheating. Oh, nothing in here likes cheating. What? Nothing in here likes cheating. Well, unless they show us the sun, we are still in a long night. Let's go. I think we should go. Either way, we're going to have to spend at least one more night on, on the trail. Maybe we'll catch the kids before then. High hopes, Nona. High hopes. High hopes, high knees. Oh, I don't know about that last part. That sounds like exercise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, you know what? You know, you're right. You're right. For the children. For the children. For the children. I'm not going to high knee it, though. I'm not going to lie. I will snap, crackle, and pop in disturbing ways. We don't need anything more disturbing than it already is. Yeah. Yeah, I can do like a really cool disco rave party with this lantern, though, apparently. Yeah, I wonder if it turns other colors. Especially if you use the apparent right way to start it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe if you use it the right way, it won't make everybody throw up. And maybe if you use it the right way, it won't make the gnome sad happy. Yeah. What do you call that? Happy sad? Um, I was going to oh. say masochistic. Yeah, I don't. However, I mean, I don't know if somebody of your stature and religious affiliation would understand what he was going through right there. <clears throat> I mean. Onward to Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like religion has a lot more has a lot more to it than you're giving it credit for Mavley. I don't follow your god we're good all right I guarantee there's at least one religious sect of of the broken god that does like self-flagellation yeah but probably not meant for that yeah no probably not okay yeah let's let's get going i'll grab a couple rocks myself we were talking about rocks we have the mealworms in a in my tinder box okay Apples. and you continue and you begin traveling along the path Although it seems to be a little bit different from what you remember. Uh -huh. After about four hours traveling, the terrain begins to change. And then over a few minutes of walking, the forest grows warmer, moister, and gradually becomes more of a swamp than a forest. Thick liquid as clear as water, but as dense as mud, covers the swamp. Trail is still visible beneath the crystal clear liquid, even as the liquid's depth increases to two feet deep. Almost up to my waist. Uh, That's a little one's doing. Is there, yeah, do we see like, Tiny footprints still? I meant Edie. <laughs> you, you still oh, see too. the trail visible beneath the extremely viscous clear liquid. What's the temperature of the liquid? Warm. Ooh, I don't know if I like that any better or worse. <laughs> uh, okay. Who's... Who's leading? I feel like Sudi or I should be the one leading just because of the depth of the water. And if anybody also needs some assistance with getting through it due to height, let us know. Yes. Yeah, as, as Edie's kind of pushing through this mud, basically only her head is visible and the mud is essentially coming up to her neck or so. I can hold your pack, Edie, or you, I suppose. I mean, I, I, I can swim through. I don't want to, I don't want to burden anyone. But you it's, definitely cannot swim through this. It's yeah, not it's a burden. much too viscous for that. Um, I don't want to burden anyone, but. Sudi, I don't know how to get Madly, you're muted. Yes, yeah, I'm up. Why don't uh, why do, I don't have a pack? Why don't you uh, just you know? Yeah, okay. Sudi Sudi can carry Edie, Edie and Mavly can carry Edie's bag. Great. What about Quinn? That's oh awesome. yeah, Quinn. Here Quinn. you can get on my shoulder. Yeah, nah, I got it. 
All right. <laughs> That's fine. If you stand up on so, my shoulders, then you can see farther. You'll be like the tallest person here for once. Lee and Sudi, from up ahead, slightly off the path, you hear the faint echo of distant chimes during a portion of your slog through the mud. So Lee's in front, and then Sudi's got Edie under her arm, I guess. Yeah, so you hear the echo of faint, distant chimes. Do you all hear that? Do we all hear that, actually? See? Is it, or is it just me? Once you, once you bring attention to it and people kind of focus on listening, then everybody can hear it. And it's up ahead on the right-hand side. Well, whatever we do, we can't go off the path. I agree, but uh, it's different than before, so we should definitely listen, at least. Yeah. Proceed with caution. After another two hours of travel through this thick, clear mud, the path continues onto a small mountainside cave. The cave is dark and only about 10 feet wide, narrowing to five feet wide. For about a 60 foot section and then opens into a 20 foot long by 20 foot wide cave. Which of us have uh, the two shields? Uh, I believe it's yeah. Edie and Nona, right? Yeah. We will we'll light those up. Is there, is there, are we still going through um, the, the clear mud in the cave? Yes. yes. Can we find the source of the chimes? Well, we kind of... Um, I'm assuming you ignored it and passed it. Oh. Yeah. Well, Sudi was looking around curiously, but wouldn't go off the path to find it. Okay. So as you're cramming through this five foot wide tunnel, um, whoever's in the front, so I believe it's Lee, Yes. And who's in the back? Sudi, right? Sudi? Well, Sudi was right after Lee. Yeah, Lee and Sudi oh. were in the front. I assume one of the dwarfs is in the back. I'll be in the back. Okay, no one is in the back. You hear shuffling, sloshing. I immediately yeah. turn towards that noise with Ilve right in front of me you what's your passive perception um 13 12 actually 12. you you two go ahead and roll me a um perception check since you're actively looking okay. nope that's a nine nine okay. nine is it coming, can we tell what direction it's coming from? Like, is it coming in front of Lee or behind her? Seems to, so what What was your passive? What is Lee's passive? Mm -hmm. My passive perception is 11. Did, sorry, did you roll? Uh, no, I did not. That's okay. just I'll, I'll just use your passive then. Is my passage. Do you want me to roll? Um, okay, apparently that's <laughs> not going to work. So what? you see... You see coming out of the muck, kind of rising out of this clear liquid, 
although it is very dark in this room and the light from your shields is creating like a reflective surface on the, um, the surface of this muck. Rising out of it, you see in front of you three creatures. These creatures appear to be as if trees or bramble or shrubbery of some sort, although it has a kind of humanoid form. Three of them before you and three of them behind you, approaching you as you're passing through this narrow section of the cavern. Right. And they're approaching rather quickly. Um, make a history check, anybody who would like to. How many of us see them? Um, people who are near the front and near the back. So I would say probably Sudi, Lee, uh, Nona, and whoever's back with Nona. 17. Six. Six. One is up kind of high. She could probably roll. Yeah. Okay. With with 17, I think I think Sudi maybe hasn't seen this exact thing, but you've probably heard stories of it. In fact, being a desert people, I think um, Sudi has heard stories, horror stories about the wet lands, places where there's lots of water, um, kind of like the boogeyman of the water regions, right? Maybe um, from traveling uh, lizard folk. Right. So these, these creatures, according to your legends, are said to be the vengeful spirits of drowned dead and seemingly exist only to share their watery fate with the living. So coming from a region of, you know, desert where water is very sparse, these are kind of like, you know, scary stories you tell to scare children from going into the watery areas. Sudi drops eating alarm. Drowned spirits, she says. And I would like everybody to roll initiative, please. Yay. I want to clarify something before we start. Uh-huh. To um, I may have just been forgetting, but uh I borrowed the shield for a while and then I don't have it anymore. Did we you have, have, you have no you have known a shield, her mm -hmm. old one. Okay, I do still. Okay, I was just checking because that. Oh, mm -hmm. my series though. Look that in. Um, because that matters for if we're already in initiative phase. Okay, I got shield. Yes, you you have Nona's old shield. Oh. Did I roll? All right. So what do we got? Edie got a face full of mud. I got a three. Ten. You got a ten. Who got a three? Nona. Nona. Eleven for Sudi. Mm. Okay. Uh, Wood is kind of half here, but Wood got an eleven. With Meaning 11. I'm I'm distracted by work, so. Yep, no <laughs> problem. Uh, Mavly, five. And four. Quinn, four. These are awesome rolls, y'all. The OG crew, we three, four, five. <laughs> yeah, 10, 3, 11, 11, 5, 4. It's outstanding. Yeah, we're going to roll low for initiative, so that way we can see what they're going to do and react to it appropriately, and then just <laughs> clean up on the backside. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's the plan, Z. Okay. Are these like so, Draugen? I'm sorry? Are these like Draugen? No, these are something else. Okay. 
These, these are a unique creature that is not in the monster's manual. They're called quag fiends. Love it. Quag. Okay, so first up, we have Sudi and Wid um, acting simultaneously. So since Wid is partially busy, we'll go with Sudi first. Hey, well, Sudi will go into Spirit of the Spider mode, aka Rage. Okay, Raging. And swing at one with her Naginata. So they're not quite in range. Do you want to move towards them? Would that mean going off the path? It would require you going out of the tunnel that you're in. Okay, then she'll hold her action. Okay, holding your action in case something comes into range? Yeah. Great. Uh, Wid, are you, Kess, are you ready? Uh, it, how wide is the cave, that the tunnel that we're in? Five feet wide. Okay, so my bear form would just be a cork then. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Wid will cast bark skin on herself. And can I do a spell and a cantrip? I don't think I can do that at once. You can do a spell and a cantrip. Okay. So long as so long as they're not um so long as one is an action and one is a bonus action, you know. Well, I want to cast Shillelagh on my um quarter staff. Which is an that's action a, or a bonus action? That's, that's a bonus action. Okay. Yeah. So she's like, oh, shalili on her quarter staff. Okay. And I think that's all she can do. Okay. Great. Uh, next up, we have Edie. And I am trying to get you guys a picture of what this thing looks like here. Try to see what Edie could possibly do that doesn't require uh, raging right now. Um, dude, okay. Does she, would she have an easy enough time uh, being small enough to get through the tunnel? To those. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're pretty small, so you can actually move through the spaces of your other party members. Benefit of being a small creature. I think halflings also can go under people's feet. Correct. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, can't, end, gonna... you can't end your turn in the same space, but you can pass through it without penalty. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to um, put a bit of like distance between myself or, yeah, between myself and the party and sort of come between the um, approaching creatures um, okay. and put my shield up ready and act in, uh, ready and attack once they uh, come within range and attack. Are you going towards the front or towards the back? Um, they're coming from like every direction. They're coming from in front and behind. The sides of your group are blocked because you're in this like narrow passage. Um, since I'm towards the front, I'll step forward about 10, 15 feet and hold a shield up and then ready um, ready a warhammer attack. Okay. These things Great. come with a range. Yeah. So next up we have our quad fiends as they seem to move through this thick mud with ease it doesn't seem to slow them down at all and they move forward seemingly in an attempt to trap you in this small enclosed area where they can just swarm you and so as the creatures move towards you initially we're going to have uh, several of them 
Three of them, in fact, move into Edie's range, and then three of them are moving into Sudi's range. Well, she's right next to me, right? Yeah. I moved up about 10 feet. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the other three are moving forward towards Lee. Can I use my held action? Or sorry, Lee, towards Nona, because Nona was in the back. Yeah, two of us have uh, held action. Right. Does it get triggered right now? So, yep, yeah, they trigger it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm also right next to Sudi and Edie, so should I assume those ones are coming towards me as well? Or? Yes. Well, uh, no, because Edie moved ahead of you, right? And so did Sudi. Oh, yeah, because, okay. I only got a 10 on my attack. I would have to declare reckless before rolling, right? Correct. Cool, yeah, that's a six. All right, so both of you, as these creatures come towards you, you swing your weapons, and it seems like the, the not quite... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they're, they're definitely corporeal, they're physical beings, but they're not entirely coherent, right? So like your weapon passes through it and doesn't seem to break any of it apart. Um, on both accounts, unfortunately, you both missed. Um, in response, the three that are um, approaching you two I will say the first one attacks Edie. The second one attacks Edie. Ouch. They all three attacked Edie. No, Edie. Um, if I've got hey. the, the shield, I'm trying to look to see if they're... Because um, I've, I've seen both shields. Uh, there's one that's a plus two and one that's a plus three. You're using the plus three. I want to make sure I have that right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So AC of 17 then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So first attack misses, second attack misses. Um, second guy, first attack misses. Oh my God, I'm rolling so bad. Second attack, your AC is 17, you said? Uh, with the shield, yeah. That is also going to miss. The third one attacking you, that is going to hit and that is going to miss. So you lucked out, one of them hit you. It is um, biting you, and as it impacts you, you take nine points of piercing damage, and you are considered grappled because you are a small Dad, Do you have resistance to that from the rage? I didn't rage yet. Oh. <laughs> you don't have resistance to grapple during rage? No, you have advantage. You have advantage on strength checks. Yeah, but I meant the attack. Mm -hmm. um, it did have advantage. I, I actually forgot to roll for advantage. Oh, that's a nat 20. That's a 16. Okay, so only two more of them hit, but one of them was a crit. That's a lot of dice. Only... <laughs> So um, the crit is going to be 18 damage, and then you take another nine. So you've taken a total of 36 points of damage. Total of 36? Total of 36. My max between, is 32. I'm down. Between six attacks. Jesus. But one of them was a crit. So, so is these, uh, with, with 36 uh, damage, I'm down. All right, so as these creatures rush forward, they completely ignore Sudi, and all three of them just kind of pile onto Edie and start biting her and tearing at her through her armor and rending chunks of flesh off of her. And um, those of you nearby um, watch on in terror as Edie is quickly overwhelmed and um, knocked down into the muck. And she's going to drown now. Uh, and she is now in danger of drowning. Uh, Nona, on the other hand, is also being approached by three of these creatures. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but they don't get advantage to hit you. So that's, um, what is your AC? 19. 19, okay, so that's one. Oof, okay, so that is three hits. So that's nine points of damage each hit. Is anyone okay. five feet of me? So Nona, or sorry, uh, Sudi and uh, Edie went ahead. But what about anyone behind me? Yes. Well, Sudi was directly behind you. So probably not. OK, so no one's within five feet of me. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Wid has no idea where she is. So. I just needed to know that for a thing, so I'm just clarifying yeah. before we keep going. I thought Sudi was directly behind her. Uh, you were, but you moved forward, remember? No. Didn't you move forward to attack, right? Yeah, oh. you, moved, you moved forward. Oh, I thought they were, like, right up next to me. Or they within 10 feet. Yeah. No, they are now. They weren't before. So my understanding was you were holding your action until you could move and attack them like they got close enough for that. So I, okay. I was right. operating under the assumption that as soon as they got within your movement, you would move and attack them. Right. Okay. That's the assumption I had as well. Well, I thought they were coming right up within 10 feet of me, but I can walk. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I'm under the impression that you moved forward and are adjacent to Edie okay. at this point. Okay, so that is the uh, Quag Fiend's turn. Um, then we have Mavli. Mavli saw Edie fall. Like, okay, so Nona is still standing, right? Barely. Nona is still standing, but Edie is not standing. So Mavli is going to walk up to where she saw Edie go down and kind of try to reach down and and get her and pull her up maybe like head above water is she being she, held down by a creature she is currently grappled by a creature but okay you can certainly you know no, i don't want to use an action for that so uh for the sake of 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 flair and role play, Mavli would reach down and kind of grab and realize something's got Edie and be like, okay, I've seen Edie do some pretty fucked up shit before. And uh, Mavli will look over at Nona and then look down and take a deep breath and, and look up and say, Lord of Redemption, this soul seeks to undo their wrongs, grant them strength for a second chance and cast cure wounds at second level. Outstanding. Uh oh, that's much better than last time I did this, guys. Uh, <laughs> that's fourteen points. Back for you, Edie. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated. And as the magical energy flows out of Mavly into Edie, closing her most critical wounds, and your eyes burst open as the pain washes through you of these creatures literally chewing on you right now. Okay, um, next we have Quinn. Is she still grappled? She is still grappled. All right, let's... Um, I am... You are also to... small, so you can move through the spaces of your allies without penalty. I, okay. I don't know where I am in comparison to Edie. If I can... Okay, let me talk this out. I'm not um, looking on you, by the way, Edie. This is pure coincidence. <laughs> I would like to use my... What would I use? Maybe a, a help or a shove to try and um, have her be let loose. And while I am doing that, shout at these, they're beautiful, at these beautiful tree monsters. Um, 
the half wick ma and try to let Edie try to let Edie escape from their grapple. And then as a bonus, um use uh eye for detail to see if there are any other hidden creatures or objects. Awesome. Make a roll. Just for the eye for detail. Yeah. As an action, is that at disadvantage? Oh, uh, you're still exhausted. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, and three. I got a three. A three. Okay. Um, you don't see anything else. Do I help Edie get ungrappled? Make a, I will allow you to roll either dex acrobatics or strength athletics to try to finagle Edie out of this creature's grasp. Okay, let's do acrobatics at disadvantage. Okay, and that will be opposed by their strength. And I rolled a 21. Ooh, I got a nine. Okay, so you are unable to pull Edie out of its grip. Okay. All right, next up we have Nona. Okay, so um, how many creatures are around? Like, do I have, obviously there, there are lots of people, the creatures in my range. There are three of them in your immediate vicinity. Okay. And they look like trees? Yep. I put a picture in Discord. Oh. Oh. Oh, they are pretty. Um, okay, so... I'm trying to decide if I should use an axe because they look like a tree. But I I think I would just have my war hammer out. So um she's gonna uh she's gonna attack with her war hammer. Okay. And um Uh, so she'll just, she'll pick the one of the ones that. Yeah, one of the ones right in front of her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she will. Oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot that I hate these dice. All right, that's a six. Uh, six is not going to hit. And then. Does she have a bonus action that she can use? Um, no, she does not. So, okay. Are you gonna move um, yeah, uh, she'll move. So, I mean, so to, so, to be so clear, get... the, the three that are in front of you are essentially blocking you into this space. So right. if you move, you either go back towards the rest of your group or you try to push past these creatures. She wants to try and like get between, well, she's already between everyone else and them, but mm -hmm. like maybe reposition herself so that she's like, more in line with everyone as opposed to just in in front you know what i'm saying yeah okay sure yeah all right uh top of the round we'll go to sudi and wid wait, 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 wait am i in the thing sorry did i not I didn't go oh what, what was your <laughs> initiative sorry oh, sorry, sorry. Just, uh, wait for me uh what was mine Ten. Ten. Oh, geez. You should have gone 
way earlier. I'll, so I'll let you go right now. Sorry about that. You should have gone way earlier. No worries. Um, okay, with everybody moving around, I used to be in front. Uh, who's closest to me? Also, how far is Edie? Um, Edie said that she moved, what, 15 feet in front of everybody? So there you go. She's 15 feet away from you. But Mavly's in the way. And Mavly's in the way. And Sudi's just behind E. Correct. You you can move through spaces where somebody already is. It just takes double movement. Not like there's a lot of places to go. Right. Okay. Well, they're still pretty close, so even with that, I could get to Edie. So Edie is still grappled after multiple attempts to get her ungrappled. <laughs> after um, one attempt, yeah. Just one? I thought two people tried to... Oh yeah, Quinn is up there too. There's a little cloud. Yeah, um, two, two attempts. So are you doing it if I try and uh, help her get ungrappled, would that be like a help action or are you doing it like if I was doing a check like if I was grappled? Yeah, that because you're you're essentially resisting that grapple, which takes an action. Okay. But it would not take my bonus action, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, then I'm gonna use my action to uh, after running up to Edie and her her party fan party. Um, I'm gonna attempt to get her ungrappled for my action. Okay. Um, and that's either acrobatics or what it was the other option. Um, because yeah, acrobatics or athletics, and they will resist you with strength. Okay. Athletics. Oh, for 24. Yay. I, I rolled a 16. Okay. Um, so 24 for athletics check. Right. With the 24, um, what does it look like when Lee kind of pulls Edie out of this thing's grip? I just like stick my hand in the muck, grab the back of her shirt and just like yank her out of the water. And I like set her behind me. Um, like kind of off to the side a little bit, but enough where you're covered if you wanted to have some space. Yeah, um, so essentially you're trading spaces with Edie. Thank you, much appreciated. You're welcome. And then I'm going to follow that up with um, using my bonus action to, uh, with my other hand, I just try and like stab down with a dagger to the um, creature that was holding Edie. Nice. All right, roll the hit. Uh, 15. 15 will hit. And for <laughs> three piercing damage. Okay, three piercing damage. Better than nothing. Um, it, it seems to do about as much damage as you expect it would. Stabbing it with a dagger. Okay, um, next up, top of the round is Sudi and Wid. Okay, well, Sudi will take another swing at it, at the same one that was just stabbed. Okay, great. Uh, and she got a one. And no, no a that's one. a seven, it's a seven, she got a 12. Okay. Um, a 12, unfortunately, does not hit. Anything else? Bonus action, move? Um, I don't know what bonus actions there are. If, if you have a bonus action, it, it should be... No, no like bonus on, actions. On your sheet, yeah. Yep. Nope, that's it. Sudi seems visibly perturbed. Okay. Uh, Wid, if you're... If yeah. You're um, so there's three in front and three behind us. Is that correct? That is correct. 
Okay, I'm just going to say that Wit is towards the back. That's fine. <laughs> it seems like the front's really crowded. Yep. Um, so uh, she will turn around and if she needs to take a step forward and uh, will attack whatever one is in the middle uh, with her quarter staff. Okay. Uh, 14 to hit. 14 just hits. Sweet. And 11 points of damage, and that's magical damage. Ooh, 11 nice. points of damage. It it smacks into it pretty hard. Your shillelagh um, definitely clobbers it, and you hear that thunk of wood and kind of a splintering uh, as your magical sh shillelagh connects solidly with this creature's... Wood on wood action. Wood on wood action. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, that's it for her turn. Okay. Um, Lee. Lee and Edie technically both at the same time. Lee, if you want to go first. Um, yeah. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and just straight up attack with my um being of the nameless okay. also as i uh as i attack i grit through my teeth to the sword to say do you know anything about how to fare well against these creatures um <laughs> what would the sword say I've rolled an 11 for hit yeah let me roll uh intelligence check for the sword um that is an 11 did i give you the sword's intelligence can you remind me what that is i think it's fairly oh, high yes 12. what 12 uh, okay yeah. so plus plus one um the sword would probably reply in your mind, the creatures appear to be wood, therefore I would try fire. Well, uh, does that 11 hit? Because I was already... I was already 11 does not no. hit. Okay. Um, mm, can I use a bonus action to pull out my torch? Or is that not? To okay. pull out your torch? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll let you use them. You can use your interact with object to do that. As the creature evades my sword, I then pull out and swipe with the torch to just kind of like do that get out of here kind of waving motion <laughs> okay yeah your torch is not lit um but yeah okay yeah that makes sense i guess well <laughs> well would my interact with object would it make sense to just light it and then that would be the oh, to light <laughs> your torch it takes an action okay um that's right so i've got my uh torch in one hand and my sword in the, the other as usual dual wielding <laughs> <laughs> and i'll just uh say who still has their torches perhaps we can push them back and then that's it it for, yeah, okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Can't leave. Um, I'd like to uh, get up from where Lee had set me down, uh, realize how dire the, the situation is. Grit my teeth and rage. Okay. It's it's more of a, a, a you just see Edie sort of grit her teeth, fur her brow, take a, a solid, determined breath, and just stare daggers at 
uh, these things with, with death and rising. Uh, take, uh, take her uh, Warhammer, run, yelling and screaming at um, at these creatures in whack. All right, Edie going into berserk mode. Rolled a hit. I'm assuming you're hitting the same one. The same one that knocked me down. And mm-hmm. just to be extra spicy, I'm going to uh, do a reckless attack. Nice. Nice. Bend yourself. What? Give me that sweet nat 20. No nat 20, but uh, it says 17 plus 4 was the higher one. That will certainly hit. That is a 21. Roll damage. Plus two for rage. Um, Then there's the uh, Divine Fury as well. Oh, right. Damn, Edie. Recovery. Um, Divine Fury does extra damage against undead, correct? I believe so. Let me double check. Okay, these classify as undead. Um, just as while you're raging, first creature you hit um, on each of your turns with a weapon attack, take 26 plus 1. I rolled okay. a 1, so it, it's 2 damage. Um, I'm not sure if... Let me double check. That's that's on top of your regular damage. Yeah, that was on top of the regular damage. The regular yes. damage was five. Okay, so six damage. Uh, uh, seven total. Seven total. Okay, great. As your hammer slams into the tree and this lightning, or, sorry, not the lightning, this divine energy rushes through uh, you, I'm assuming that same tattoo kind of lights up. Awesome. And charges this hammer with energy as it slams into this uh, creature. I double checked, by the way, about it. It just says some undead demons, devils, and other creature types are vulnerable. So it depends on uh, yeah. depends on your end. If it okay. it. Yeah. All right. Um, the creatures are going to go. I think we have two options up front between um, Wid and Nona. So I'll do that first. Odds for uh, Wid, evens for Nona. So that's an even, that's an even, and that's an odd. So two on Nona, one on Wid. First attack, first two miss. That's a nat one, that's a miss. So on Wid. Uh, I believe that's one hit against Wid. Uh, my AC is a 16 with bark skin. I rolled a 19. Then, yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> uh, so you take nine points of piercing damage, and you are grappled. Um, can I do Rebuke the Violent and cause the attacker to take radiant damage equal to the damage it just dealt? You certainly can. Okay. Uh, it has to make a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, what does this look like? Oh, so, that's a five, so that fails. Sweet. Um, so it's like, uh, gosh. So I've been flavoring it how like Nona's eyes kind of flash white when she's communing with her god. So she'll um she'll say something like um like uh Ilmater will make you pay for this. And she kind of um rushes in between the two. Um she'll stay in her spot eventually does it just for flavor and she rushes mm-hmm. in between the two and like pulls out her shield and that's already glowing 
And it does one of those things where it just kind of like pulsates it pulsates out as radiant damage. Nice, nice. And this radiant energy strikes this fiend that just hit uh, Wid almost as like a reflection of that energy mm -hmm. um, back at it and kind of knocks it a little bit. And it is clearly um, injured by this. Um, so this, this one uh, fiend up with you looks pretty rough. It was the same one uh, that you had hit previously. Is Wid still grappled and take damage? Yes, you are still grappled and you still take damage. Okay. All right. So in the back of the group, um, I believe I have three options here. So I'm just going to roll a D4. ED is one. Lee is two. Sui is three. Actually, a, a Quinn's up there too, right? Mm -hmm. So Quinn is, Quinn is four. Okay, so that's up there too. Yep. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, well there, there's not enough space for all of you to be crammed into this same little tiny area. Well, so can you guys be, decide. Sudi can be back a little because she has reach. Okay, cool. So we'll we'll go uh, Edie, Mavly, Lee, and Quinn. Lee has good protective abilities, but at the same time, she is distracting the torch right now. So, All right. Um, so one is hitting Quinn, one is hitting Edie, and one is hitting Lee. All right. First one on Quinn. Um, fifteen plus four. That is a nineteen to hit. Yes. All right. You take nine piercing, and you are grappled. Against Edie, that is an 18 for the first attack and an 18 for the second attack. Oh, geez. Um, I did reckless last time. So. No, not 20s. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but each of those does nine damage. However, you are raging, so it reduces it to four. So you take eight damage total. And you are also grappled. Um, Lee, that is a five, and that is a 14, but I believe your AC is higher than that. Yes, AC. Okay. Uh, so that is their turn. It is now Mavly's turn. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, having heard what... Lee said, Mavly's going to turn around and uh, kind of put her hand up uh, towards Lee's torch and say, sure, sounds great, and cast uh, Press the Digitation and light the torch. Awesome. Love it. That is a very good use of the spell. <laughs> Got it. I'll work my way around it somehow, Z. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's great. Okay. And then she's gonna. I realize that this may, like, depending on how you want to flavor it, do an attack of opportunity. But she's gonna back up a little bit, uh, just just a wee bit, yeah, because it's crowded right here, right now. Yeah, I I think that would provoke an attack of opportunity. Uh, let's see, two of them are currently grappling. Uh, one of them is not, so I think it will attack you. Um, and that is a eighteen on the die. Yeah, that's totally fine. I'm ow. Yeah, so that's nine piercing. You jerk face. Boo. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, and then next up we have Quinn. Where am I at? Where's my turn order? Just for reference. Same as Edie. <laughs> Grapple, so I'm gonna try to not be. Um, do I can I use um, one of my weapons to get free, or do I need to use my hands? You need to make an opposed grapple check. So you okay. can either do strength athletics or dex acrobatics to escape from the grapple. However, just to be clear, grapple does not 
prevent you from attacking. It only prevents you from moving. Oh, so if okay. you're not planning on moving anywhere, you don't need to break the grapple. Okay, then I will, um, I'll be grappled and attack. Okay. I am going to use the dagger bonus action with my short sword and is, do I have to attack the one that's holding me or, or is it within five feet of my friends? Like within, I'm asking, do I get a sneak of, attack? Within five feet of you. It says within another enemy. Oh, to activate sneak attack. Yeah. Yeah, you, you are within sneak attack, yeah. So first attack is a dirty 20. Nice, that will definitely hit. Second attack is a 15. Hmm. Yeah, that'll hit. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, Quinn. So 1d4 plus four. That's just, and then one d okay. Sorry, I'm not going to do all the math. 1d4, that's a one plus four. So that's a five. And plus your sneak attack. Three plus. Oh, rogues. Eight, eight, nine, 13 total. 13 total. All right, this this one that you guys have kind of been just pounding on, um, it looks pretty ragged. It's still going, but boy, does it, it's barely like, barely hanging on. Um, and anything else for Quinn? No, that's, that's all I can do. All right, go Nona. Um... Okay, so I think I think we should we should I think she's going to uh, go the torch route as well, um, and uh, she has a torch. How many would you allow me to um, take out a torch and light it? And and hold it at lit in one action for your whole turn. Yes. Yeah. So okay. for yeah, so you would. I assume you have your torches on the exterior of your pack so that they're easily accessed. So you basically sure. reach behind you, grab a torch, and quick spark it, and it lights up. But that would take your whole turn. Okay. Then she's going to do that. Um, so now she has a shield um, and a torch. Okay. Uh, top of the round, we're looking at Sudi and Wid again. Okay. So who's still grappled? Um, Edie and Quinn. Okay. Well. And. Wid. And Nona. No, Wid. Right, Wid. Sorry. Okay. Well, Sudi will reckless attack the one that has Quinn. Okay, recklessly attacking the one that has Quinn. This is the um, pretty badly injured one. Okay. That's a 20. Natural? No. Okay. Uh, roll your damage. That most certainly hits. 12. 12 damage. Um, what does it look like as Sudi eviscerates this thing? Woo! She just kind of hacks it to pieces in frustration, desperate to be hitting something. Mm -hmm. Cool. So she's kind of like smacking it after it kind of goes down. <laughs> Swiping it, spinning her Naginata, smashing it again. Nice. Clearly in a rage, 
Sudi destroys one of these quag fiends. Anything else? She seems less upset now that she's actually done some damage. Cool. Uh, moving bonus action, anything? No. Cool. All right, Wid. All right, uh, Wid accepts her fate of being grappled. And um, the five foot space that's in front of her and Nona, she's going to create bonfire there. Very nice. Okay. So it fills a five foot cube. Um, any creature in that space uh, must succeed in a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8 fire damage. Um, and that'll happen every time they move into that spot. All right, that's a two, and that's another two, and a 16. Uh, dex 13, so one of them succeeded. Okay, so two of them take how much damage? Uh, 1d8 fire damage. Let me roll that. Uh, wait, what? Oh, six. Sorry, that rolled two. Six. Okay. Um, I'm going to say the one that was already injured failed, and one of the ones that was not injured failed. So the one that was already injured, as this bonfire ignites beneath it, and this roaring flame just encompasses it, it starts to shriek as, as the brittle filaments that were still holding it together start to dissolve um, as it burns up in the flame. And you can hear it shriek as it kind of collapses into the fire. And the other one, um, the kind of loose brambles and kind of twigs that are dangling off from it, like ignite. And um, this clearly does more damage than uh, you expected it to do. Nice. They, they took 12 damage. Awesome. Uh... I think the one that was damaged is the one that grappled with. Yes, that is correct. So you are no longer grappled. Cool. And then that's it for her turn. Okay. Um, next we have Edie and Lee. Uh, do you have a preference to going first or shall Go I? Go for it. Okay, except Go for it. <laughs> the torch. Uh, I see what happened. Uh, it's still behind me, right? Or is it in front of me now? Okay. For the record, the reason that I, I put you both at the same time, in case you want to like coordinate your actions, you are technically acting simultaneously. Oh. Okay. Well, Edie, you are without flame at the moment. Do you want to join me? I'm gonna I'm gonna be thrusting my torch. <laughs> um, or do you want to go separate? I'm good either way. I'll, I'll join in on that. I'll take a torch out of my pack. Okay, so as I'm, uh, I guess I'll kind of um, use my body to be a little defensive of Edie as I take my torch and now I'm swinging it. Uh, and, well, okay. My, my attempt would be to swipe at as many as I can that may be in reach of the flames to hopefully catch them on fire kind of vibe. But yeah, so so there there actually are stats for a torch as a weapon. It counts as an improvised weapon. So if you have proficiency with improvised weapons. Uh, I don't. I have to check that. I actually have no idea. Um, so in, in improvised weapon, this is essentially going to do um, it's 1d4 damage plus one fire. So it's going to do your strength modifier plus one plus 1d4, assuming you hit. Okay, and would I just roll like a, a d20 for whether I hit? Yeah, as a fighter, um, you are proficient with all weapons. 
So you are proficient with improvised weapons. I don't know about ED though. Uh, no, I don't see anything for improvised weapons. Uh, I do have uh, an arm strike up here. Yeah, so you would do it just without your proficiency bonus, which I think is plus two. Okay. All right, also, so what'd you get, Lee? Well, I rolled a six for whether I hit. Okay. Um, I'm just going to assume that that's a miss. <laughs> I guess I just frantically swipe and a little too frantically swipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you, you stick out the torch to like wedge it in its body and it like moves out of the way. Um, you do have a weapon in your offhand. I do, but if that used up my action, I can't use my, well, I'm. You can actually, if you have a weapon in your offhand, you do get a second attack. You just don't get your proficiency bonus. Okay, and that's just not if it's two-handed, but right now I'm doing one-handed, so it would be fine. Okay. So I guess I'll follow up and swipe with my Bane of the Nameless. Okay. So just make your regular roll with Bane of the Nameless and subtract two from that. So to hit is 21. Okay, so that definitely hits. And the damage will be the regular damage, but you don't include your strength bonus. Okay, so that would be 12 minus 2 for 10 total. 10 damage. All right. All right, so you smack into it. You miss it with your torch, but then you catch it as it's moving away with Bane of the Nameless, catching it pretty solidly as the blade thunks into the wood with that satisfying sound. I feel like that wouldn't be satisfying as somebody who wields a sword because it'd just be like a thunk. And... <laughs> but, okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Would it be as somebody who uses wood swords, thunking into wood terrifies me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, and Edie? Um, I'm looking through my thing and I just looked over two weapon fighting. Mm -hmm. um, does the Warhammer count as a light enough uh, martial weapon because it does versatile? Uh, no, what, what is a light weapon is the torch. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, seeing what everyone else is doing with the uh, fire and how that's affecting them all a swipe at the same one that Lee was getting uh, with my okay. torch as well. Yeah, with both the torch and the hammer? Yeah. Yeah, if I'm able to do that, absolutely. Yep, okay. Let's do it. Hammer's a 10. Okay, the hammer misses. Um, and the torch was uh, plus strength. Plus strength mod? Um, it, not to hit, no. Okay. Um, I'm assuming I mean, I the torch 16. is, I'm assuming the torch is in Edie's offhand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I rolled a 16. I'm just, uh, yeah, so that'll hit. Not used to improvised weapons to know what gets added or not. Right, so improvised weapon does not add your proficiency bonus because it's in your offhand. You're not adding your strength bonus to damage. So you're just going to roll 1d4 um, plus 1 for the fire. That's a 4 plus 1 fire damage. 4, okay, so it takes 8 fire damage. Okay, great. And it, as you shove your torch into it, it definitely reacts as the flames kind of catch bits of its body uh, with your torch shoved inside of its uh, gaps in its torso. Uh, next up, we have, we have the quag fiends. 
So we have four of them remaining, uh, two up front, two in the back. Uh, my upfront peoples, I have Wid and Nona. The back. Sorry, did I skip Nona? No, no, I haven't yet. Sorry. I rolled a three in initiative. Don't worry about it. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's a four to hit, and that's a 14 plus four is an 18. So I believe your AC is 19. 19 so mm -hmm. that will miss. Um, against Wid. Oh, ouch. I'm sorry. That's a nat 20. Boo. So that is 18 piercing damage against Wid. I'm down. Oof. Okay. And then Does your bonfire the, go too? It's concentration. Uh, so yes, the bonfire would go out. All right. Um, in the back of the group, let's see. I have my same four peoples. Uh, that is I a three. A so this is against uh, Mavly. Mavly stepped back. I did. I did. I stepped. Oh, you back. did step back. So this one would then be against Quinn. No, I didn't step and back. Second, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the second one is against Edie. So the first one, uh, that is a 21 and a 5. So the 21 uh, will hit, and that does 9 points of damage as it bites into you, and you are already grappled. So that doesn't really make much difference. Against Edie, uh, that is a 19 and a 15. Quinn is not grappled, is she? Will a 15 hit you? 15 does not hit, but that 19 sure does. Okay, so the 19 hits you, and you take four points of piercing damage because you are still raging. Actually, I forgot that you reckless attacked, so I need to make sure I don't crit. Okay, you're good. I actually didn't. I don't think I reckless attacked. Uh, That's right. Sudi did. Her. Cool. So you just take that four damage. You're good. Um, and it is Madly's turn. Uh, Mav Lee turns around and sees Wid go down and goes for God's sake and she walks over and, and grabs on to, to Wid and says uh, uh, oh god I don't know what I say she said oh, you know what you're going to get up Wid and you're going to look the fuckers in the eye and say not today and she's going to cast Cure Wounds but only at first level because kids I'm running out of spell slots <laughs> Uh, is it going to work this time? Yes, it is. Oh, that's wonderful. Look, 10. 10 points to win. Nice. And, and that's that's it. That's that's really that's what I got. Wood sits up quickly and says, not today. <laughs> not today. I love not it. Not today. Um, Quinn. Are any of them still on fire or no? Uh, one of them has a torch in its belly. Uh, the bonfire, however, has gone out. Okay. Is that one in the back where I am or is it in the front? The one with the torch in its belly is right next to you. It's, oh. Edie's, it's Edie's torch. Okay. Uh, so... I am going to use my oil as an improvised weapon and just pour some on it. Oh, yeah. You uh, can actually throw a vial of oil. I see. But if I'm close enough, I'll just yeah. splash some on him. Um, if the target takes any fire damage before the oil dries, which is after a minute, the target takes an additional five fire damage from oh, the yeah. burning this, oil. This, that's going to be nasty. And then I am going to use um, my bonus action to hit with a pointy weapon. Okay. I'm going to... So you're you're throwing this oil on this creature that is currently burning. Right. Um, so yes. so it's just going to take the damage. Okay. Um, so it's going to take ten damage right now. Um, I am. And, and what does this look like as you ignite this thing into flame, 
and it dies. Oh shit. So she's just sort of flailing it around like um in a sort of exorcist sort of bless you kind of way. Uh it's just like the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> as she's as she's doing it, uh Quinn has a song in her pocket. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, says he. I will lead you all wherever you may be. I will lead you all through the dance, said he. If you're Catholic, you might recognize that song. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So okay. is there still another one that I can stab or like attack with a sharp? Yep, only one. Dagger? Okay. And do I still have friends in combat with it? Is this still a sneak attack or no? It is, yes. Okay. So dagger nine plus six is 15. 15 hits. One D four, five. Yeah, that's an eight plus my two D six. Five is 13 total. 13. Wow. Okay, yeah, you thunk your dagger into it solidly. And it, it kind of resists as you're trying to pull your dagger back out because you sunk it in uh, so deeply, but you do manage to get it back out. Awesome. And that's it. Okay, cool. Um, Nona, last but not least. Um, is Wid still prone? Wid is definitely still prone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will, I will use have my movement to bring her back up. Okay. You are now not prone. Um. I. Okay. So. Um. I have oil too that I <laughs> forgot about until now so um let's just let's just use that then um so um are any of the the ones that took fire damage still on fire uh no okay yeah, they were taking damage from the bonfire. When the bonfire went out, they stopped. Uh, okay. The bonfire does ignite flammable objects. Right. They they are um, weak to fire. They're not flammable. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, she's going to... Um, kind of she's going to take the uh oil out of her pocket because it's or not her pocket what is what is it in it's in her it's in her chest in her chest yeah if it's a little vial of oil i assume you have like a small pouch at your side okay where you keep your like vials Okay. So that they don't break. Yeah. Thanks. See. So she, 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 um, God, how does she do this? Because she has, she has her torch. She has her shield. She like wrestles the oil out of her pocket with her, with her shield hand. Okay. So to be clear, you need to uh, drop your shield to do this. Can I just like stick it under my arm? No. Shields are pretty cumbersome and you can't just stick them under your arm. I've stuck large things under my arm, see. I I'm being I'm being <laughs> um okay. Well, in that case, she'll just 
um, drive the torch into one of them. Okay. Instead. All right, go ahead and make a roll to hit. Okay, so um, can I do... Um, can I choose one of the ones that look less injured? Um, the least injured one, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll it over here so you guys can see because I don't like the dice. All right, that's an 18. Okay, that hits. Okay, so um, we're going to shove it right up into its like chest cavity, and yep. wedge it in there. Yep. Um, and then as a bonus action, she's going to do some lay on hands for herself because she needs it. Okay, great. So it's 1d4 plus 1 plus your strength modifier. Okay. Um, 1d4. 1d4 plus 1. That's a 2. Plus 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. Okay. 10 points of damage. All right. You shove your torch in there. And again, little brambles start burning up and the, the thing lets out like an incoherent kind of shriek uh, as it's clearly in a large amount of pain. At the top of the round, we have Sudi and Wid. Hey, you wanna go first this time, Wid? Uh, sure. So we have what, two baddies on each side left? Uh, there's actually only one left at the back. The two up front uh, both look pretty grievously injured. I think you injured. keep confusing the back and the front. Yeah, Nona and I are in the back. Uh, yeah, right. So there's two in the back, one in the front. Okay. Um, Wid is going to uh, create a bonfire again in that five-foot space. Okay. And that is deck saves. Yep. That is a natural 20 and a four. All right, one of them. Uh, so one of them, your bonfire will destroy. Uh, what does it look like? Uh, it starts at the bottom and if they have expressions, you can see their expression of horror before it burns up. Uh, nice. It's four points of fire damage, so eight, I guess. Yeah, eight points of fire damage. And that will destroy one of them. And if the other one ends its turn in that space, they will take damage. Okay. That's Anything it. For my turn. Nope. Okay. I think that's all I can do. Sudi. Do a recklessly attack again. Recklessly attacking again. That's an 18. 18 will most certainly hit. It's another 12. 12 points of damage. And she that takes it. And slashes at it. That takes it exactly to its death. So once again, uh, how does Sudi finish this one off? Just with one fearsome spinning blow, slicing through it. <sighs> All right. Y'all don't fuck with Sudi. She's wrecking shit up there. That's two, two dead. Okay, cool. Um, anything else once you finish that thing off? That's it. Okay, just stay in there. Take a breath. Cool. All right, next up we have Lee and Edie. Same. So the, the, the creatures in front of Lee and Edie uh, have all been dispatched at this point. So I'm going to, what, what's the distance to the closest, uh, closest creature? I'm going to say probably about 20, 25 feet. 
Mm. And how is speed impacted by the water? It's not halved, is it? It is halved. This is considered difficult terrain. Okay. Uh, well. Hasn't been a huge concern up to this point because you haven't really moved very far. I'm going to use my action to dash. Okay. For, um, is the most damaged creature uh, also within 25 feet? Yes. However, if you use your action to dash, you cannot use your bonus action to attack. You can only use your bonus action to attack if you take the attack action. Well, in that case, so how does this work if Ian and I are going at the same time? Do we have to? Can I move first? Straight up? You can just, yeah, you can go first. What What's happening is that your actions are occurring simultaneously. Well, yeah, but this would affect what I would like to do, which is to use my dash action, but I'm also carrying Edie while doing it, which would make me only move 15 feet. No, that's fine. That's fine. And then I can hold. run at the same time and that way oh, you can save your speed. But then you would use an action. So I'm wondering, can I? I've got 25 feet of movement. As long as whatever's there is uh, within 20. That speed is half because of the um, water muck. So I'm, right. thinking, I'm wondering if I can actually just move first and then that way I can have Edie be closer that she might be able to get there. Okay. Back. If that's okay. Z. Yeah, I'll yeah. allow that. Okay. If you want to take the dash action yes. while carrying Edie. Yeah, I'm just gonna swoop. <laughs> say like, let's go and then grab you and just ready yourself, kind of, kind of. Yeah, that's that's uh, really cool. I'll I'll allow that. Cool. Uh, okay. Then I, uh, yeah. Then you are now within ten feet of creature, and I just like put you down, I guess. And then, well, actually. Well, if you if you launch me maybe at the uh, at the creature, I can kind of go on top of it, grapple it, and then. Unfortunately, start you can't you can't throw her because your action was to dash. Yeah. <laughs> also, I hope your acrobatics is high if you're <laughs> <laughs> that. My athletics is better. <laughs> but yeah, so so how how I kind of envision this is you're picking up Edie and then sprinting through this clear mud. And then at, at some point when you get close enough, you're just gonna kind of let go of her. Like I'm calling you forward, yeah. Yeah, and then Edie, what I'll need from you then is um, either an acrobatics or an athletics check to make sure that you don't fall prone when you get dropped. Athletics, please and thank you. Okay. They <laughs> say, go for it, Edie. <laughs> for a 24. Okay, perfect. You you kind of like flip out of uh, Lee's arms and manage to land in this mud, sinking just a little bit, or maybe even standing on the corpses of one of the other ones. Um, and you are now uh, within five feet of the remaining creature. Five or ten. Oh, I'm gonna, uh, if possible, use that uh, two weapon fighting or a, a whack with the warhammer and with the uh, with a torch. Yeah, recklessly. I'll stay without being reckless this time. Okay, great. For a natural twenty, twenty-four. Na oh, sweet. Okay. So the minimum damage that you can do here is three, right? Because you're raging and you automatically do a minimum of one. Yeah. Plus your strength bonus, which is really high. So it only has three HP left. So how does Edie eliminate the final uh, Quag Fiend? Uh, I'd like to imagine as we um, let Edie go that she finds your footing on uh, some tree corpses, yells, 
really loudly just roars at this thing's face and just demolishes it, then it uh, shattering in a different pieces with that Warhammer strike. Nice. And with that, all of these creatures appear to be dead and you are plunged once more into darkness and near silence of this narrow cavern. Well, at least we have uh, torches lit now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Ove again. Judy says with satisfaction, they can be stopped. Can I? Sorry, you really when, when the things. Oh, sorry. Sorry. What, what was that, Julian? I'm sorry. When, when the things died, did they fall back into the goop? They sink into the clear mud, yeah. So that means I can take the torch back? You can collect the torch. It is now wet. Yeah. But yeah, you can recover the torch. Cool. Um, what are these things? They are the spirits of the drowned. I see. I asked the sword. So yeah, what are these things? <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe silly? The, the spirit or the the sword with it with a very sarcastic kind of smart ass reply says clearly they are the spirits of the drowned <laughs> <laughs> but they're also trees i think yes well i'm not all knowing well are you sure you know more than me that much is obvious about these particular topics. <laughs> Time to reforge that sword. <laughs> <laughs> Lee seems like annoyed and like it got under her skin and she's sulking now. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys have no idea what was said. <laughs> All right. Uh, assuming that you continue traveling. Yeah. Okay. So, um. I would say um one thing to note, too. Lee thought that battle was pretty cool and there were a couple cool moves. And I will just say that as someone that likes to fight, um, I will I will not request, but like just throw out a little note of like, I feel like she would have felt good after that fight, whatever you want to do with that. See, <laughs> or just like got a little like um, satisfaction from it. Yeah, okay. I I'm down. I'm down with that. It, it I'm, I'm not going to go so far as to say you recover stress from that, but maybe like psychologically, you feel a little bit better. Uplifted, I would say, slightly. Yeah. So that's like her thing. The first total victory we've had in a while. So you continue further on into a approximately 20 foot by 20 foot open chamber. Uh, in this chamber, you can clearly see sunken within this clear mud what appears to be the bones and remains of four dead individuals, as well as some scattered amounts of coinage um, before the cave continues um, into another narrow section. And there's still lots of clear mud. Mm-hmm. Are the little ones being carried again? Really no trouble, Edie. 
Yes, please. <laughs> oh, Edie, here. She gives you um, uh, three points of lay on hands. Thank you. Where does um, Edie prefer to sit? Like, would you want to be like on the back, on the shoulder? Um, you could be held like a baby, but I would assume that would be demeaning. Held in a way that um, is easiest or best to like set her down should anything happen that she can jump into the fray uh, pretty quickly. Probably on the back. She's looking, she's looking a little roughed up. That's what I would say. Yeah. Quinn also gets three points of lay on hands. And thank if you, Edie, um, as well. I'd be going slower unless I got rid of some equipment. Um, so, uh, Z, will that make much of a difference right now? Like, are you guys all okay going slightly slower pace if we're hearing Edie? You're going at half speed because of the mud anyway. And you probably move faster than the majority of us because of your height anyway. Okay. Yeah, if you guys are all cool with it, because I don't know what else it would be anyway, so. Most of them are dwarves, gnomes, and halflings, which have a 25 move speed. As a human, you have a 30 move speed, so you're just naturally faster than they are anyway. Yeah, good point. Okay, yeah. Okay. After... Yeah, um, so the tunnel continues at about 10 feet wide for another 300 feet or so before exiting back into the swampy muck. After another four hours of travel, the path leads finally out of the clear muck and again back to a sparse forest, blackened and charred as if affected by a great and recent fire. Can we take a short rest here? You can. That'd be great. Yeah, do you want to take a short rest? Sure. Unless I want us to try and take a long rest to spin. I would specifically love a short rest. Okay. How long has it been? Like 10 hours? Seven. Oh. We're not taking a long rest yet. Okay. Yeah, no, we don't have to. siesta. See, walking through all of this, did we happen to pass any sadly left behind bedrolls or backpacks? <laughs> Unfortunately for Mavly, you did not. Well, hell. Thank you. Mm hmm. All right, so you take a short rest. Feel free to roll your hit dice. Uh, let me know how many hit dice you're using. Pretty still has full health, so she spends the time practicing with her weapon because she's still not satisfied that she missed twice in a row. Okay. Is anybody else doing anything notable during their short rest, or is it just kind of like, holy shit, that was rough? I am resetting action search. I'm resetting my channel divinity and doing a hit die. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Madly one... will um, kind of do a little little drumming on her her like thighs and chest and whatnot and uh do a song of rest um and players um if they spend one or more hit die they regain an extra 1d6 hit points hey look at that bards are useful as i did helpful things even when i was fighting See, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <crazy>. <laughs> that uh, was great 
Wit will do a hit die as well. Okay. As Sudi practices with her naginata, it looks to the others as though she's dancing. And when Mavli begins to drum, she begins to dance to the beat. Very cool. Very cool. It's like watching capoeira for somebody who's never seen capoeira before. You wouldn't necessarily think that it's like a martial thing because it looks more like a dance. I'm mostly familiar with it because of Bob's Burgers. <laughs> yes, that's exactly <laughs> Capoeira. <laughs> Brazil. Brazil. Ponytail, ponytail. All right. Uh, Edie's used up uh, two hit dice as well. Just let you I used one. Okay, great. And you get back on the road after your short rest. As I you continue through the forest, I don't know how many hours uh, you're willing to continue going, but. Um. After six more hours of travel, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. the sparse forest begins to get dense again. Though the trees do not retain any color beyond black, gray, and occasionally brown. But we're out of the swamp, right? Yeah, you've been out of the swamp now for about 10 hours. Cool. We should probably take a long rest now. You said that this, it looks like it has gone through a fire. Is it still like that? Yes. It is denser though. It's not quite as badly burnt. Okay. Um, make a perception check. Ooh. Anybody who wishes to. I'm wondering how recent it looks, like if there's still ash in the air or if it looks like it's been dusty. Yeah, it, it looks very recent. Okay. Ten for suiting. Like, like still hot recent or like... Not, not still hot, but Barely. to the point where like the ground is definitely covered with fresh ash. Um, you know, there's still... You get that that acrid smoke smell. Mavly will uh, cast prestidigitation and make a much better smell, like like gardenias, maybe. Ooh, I particularly like rosemary. Yeah, I could do that in like a minute. Um, Give me so a those minute. Of you who, those of you who rolled above a fifteen. Um. Off in the distance, you spot an archway. On the path or off the path? On the path. Okay. It, it appears practically identical to the previous arch. The and time it, arch? And it exudes, yeah. you, you kind of get a sense of weird safety. That sounds like an oxymoron. It does. But I'll go with it. <laughs> yeah, so the, the arch is simple, bare, but surrounded by a thick mass of blackened trees on both sides. Old runes seem to have once lined the edges, but have long since been eroded. No, no, we'll throw the torch in this time once we get there. <laughs> you kind of and... feel a connection to the arch. It has like a strange familiarity or a significance to you as if you've been here before maybe in a dream but you can't quite place it as as a gentle gust of wind rushes past you the trees begin to shift slightly 
and you catch in like the corner of your eye and like brief glimpses just past your vision um little flickers of oranges and yellows or browns and greens that disappear just as quickly as they appeared and then it goes back to the scorched black and brown as if it's an exhalation of breath are there any markings or carvings on the arch or writing or anything of that sort it's clear that that there were markings or carvings or runes um, on these on this arch, but it's clear also that they have long since eroded beyond recognition. I would ask the sword, what do you know of this place? This gives me a strange feeling. At least trying to put past the, the last comment, just bury it out of her mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, the sword would respond and say, this appears to be one of the many gates that we have yet passed through. Why does it feel like... It feels really familiar and... I'm, I don't know. We haven't seen this before, have we? I'm getting a strange feeling. I don't know if you have any... Sword, uh, or, uh, nameless, um... Can I, can I nickname you? Can, uh, you prefer a name? I prefer, prefer Shaliosi Thysrael. Shal and you Shal shall address me as such. Shaliosi? Thy, was it, what, 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 can you say that one more time? Shaliosi Thysrael. Shaliosi Thysrael. God Close see. enough. <laughs> shot, 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 shot. Good old Sally Thyroid. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, my, my thought just completely went out. <laughs> I don't know if, if uh, you have any thoughts on why this place feels weird. That would be cool. I think maybe you don't feel anything, right? I mean, this is just a archway. Do you feel anything strange? Is it just is it just a us thing? Can you feel things like that? I don't know how this works. I find it strange that you would ask me this question. Well, better to ask than not ask, because I don't know what I'm doing here. And uh you seem more akin to this magical sort than me, so, uh... Are you not seeking the children? Yes, the, uh... As far as I know, non-magical, normal, village children. I would love to seek that right now, and only that. That would be great. Yes. Then it would seem that we are on the path. Cool. Please pacing slightly if there's uh if if you guys are not actively like if you're examining something she'll start pacing around and kind of. Oh, Sadie asked her whether the trees can be eaten. I don't know. Do you eat trees? I don't eat trees, but uh, I guess we're eating Stranger Things here soon. Maybe if we need to. So go for it. Let me know how that goes. Are they within reach? The trees? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sudi so grabs some leaves and tastes it. Um, there are no leaves. Oh, they're all burned. <laughs> they're all burnt, yep. Yeah, she grabs a stick and tastes it. It Ew. tastes like charcoal. Okay. And pretty gross. Have you ever it out. have you ever had charcoal in your mouth? Yeah. By accident yeah. marshmallows? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty gross. <laughs> It activates something in your body, right? Only activated charcoal does. Uh -huh. Yeah, just regular wood charcoal does not. So, I do is so the question is: Do we take our rest for the night on this side? of the gate or the other side? 
can I can totally jump through the gate and you can see what happens. I think I'm gonna throw. Natalie's this torch gonna in. go forward. No, Matt, she's gonna throw the torch in first. Okay. Wait, um, uh, as as Mavly goes through the gate, um, Nona throws the torch, and immediately, very similar to other gates, you observe a very clear time dilation. As Mavly slows down to a crawl. Well, if we wanted to take a long rest, I guess uh, Mavly could just be there. And... Mavly won't get a long rest if she's there. That is true, but is somebody else going to go in after her right now? Because that seems like a slow idea. Um, She's still like right next to the gate, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, Someone besides me should do it because I feel like she'll get mad at me. So just go in and get her, bring her back? Just reach in and grab her hand and pull her back. Okay, Sudi reaches in and grab her. Wait. Oh, interesting. Rope. Okay. Could have used rope. I would like. I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw, Sudi. Fourteen. Fourteen. Can I help or also, or is that good? Uh, you can't really help on saving throws. So um, I guess how I kind of envision this is almost immediately after Mavly steps through, Sudi probably reaches forward and grabs her and kind of pulls her back. So how, how this probably appears to Mavly is as you step through the portal, like the moment you step through, you're just yanked back. As soon as she comes back, th- damn it, Nona! I've made assumptions. I've walked. I've walked away. <laughs> what? <laughs> now you're using spells to pull me through gates. That's a mess. So he's still holding on to shield oh, or whatever. Never mind. I take it back. Sorry. She looks down at Natalie. We're sleeping. Here? Okay, that's cool. Sleep? No, wait. Are we sleeping? I thought we weren't supposed to be sleeping. Are we all sleeping? She She turns back toward the others. If we all got ready and did that together, that is what we would be doing right now. Lee pulls out her bedroll and keeps pacing after placing it down and not sitting down. <laughs> uh, Mavly, did you see anything on the other side of the gate? I know you were there just briefly, but... That's an see, excellent question. Did I see anything on the other side of the gate? Um, You can see through the gate. I saw exact... It looks like it's the same. Well, that's really? boring. <laughs> I don't disagree. <laughs> Uh, so are we still in the safe? Are we still in the wandering woods or whatever it was called? Uh-huh. The roaming forest. Right. <laughs> That's close. The wandering woods <laughs> is kind of something melodious. Else. I like that. It's from something. Hold on. Sudi so, approaches. Uh, oh, go approaches Nana Ellie and says it's somebody makes a fire, I can cook those gloves in your helmet. Oh, Suddenly, a- there is a campfire in front of you that I created. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I missed that. But she offers to take the helmet and the gloves. As the campfire appears. <laughs> <laughs> Ask oh. and you shall receive if it is a cantrip. This place is so weird. How does it even? I don't understand. Where does the fire keep coming from? The fire is within Mavly. Flame on. <laughs> Flame yo, Captain. The, 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 the mealworms were in my tinderbox. So she met no um, to, gets... to be clear, these are maggots. Oh. You just mealworm size. Mealworm sized yeah. so... mealworm-sized maggots. Yeah. Gotcha. 
I rolled an eight on cooking them with a little salt. Very nice. What kind of check is that? Survival. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to require a check to okay. saute some maggots. <laughs> <laughs> you, we can, you can use a little of the oil that I didn't use during the fight. Ooh, not the same kind of oil. oil. Definitely not the same kind of oil. <laughs> <laughs> it says that is not for... cooking oil. <laughs> like for anointing. Yeah, it was for anointing. <laughs> They're holy maggots. They are, well, isn't anointment oil like olive oil? It's olive mineral oil. oil. Yeah, definitely not EVO. Oh, okay. Yeah, the vegetable oil, oil, mineral oil. oil, very different things, yeah. Gotcha, okay, cool, 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 cool. But they're both flammable. Yes, one more than the other. Is mineral oil more flammable than vegetable oil? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, so you're settling down, um, cooking dinner. I believe you have four rations, so yeah. who's Who wants who's to eating? eat bugs? Uh, in addition to the bugs, Wid will cast good berry and everyone gets one. Okay. Oh, and that's go. full nourishment for the day as well as one health point. All right. Awesome. So with the addition of the good berry, out of curiosity, who's, who's eating the bugs? Are you kind of giving a small portion of bugs to everybody? It's an appetizer. <laughs> nice. Let's try some bugs. Mavely politely refuses. Thank you so much. I am full. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, we'll I've eat a things. pinch. All right, no bugs for Mavely. Everybody I'll else try eating, one. eating the bugs. I'll try one. The crunchy. Tastes Only like the crunchy ones. Protein. I thought they were grubs. Maggots. Those are mushy. And they're fried and salted. Well, they're fried. Yeah, oh, okay. sautéed, not not fried, sautéed. So probably a little bit crunchy. Cool. With like a gooey inside. Mm-hmm. And when you bite on them, it's kind of like a white, a white greenish fluid that like flows between your teeth. And mm. yeah, it's it's great. It's a whole experience. It's like yoga balls, but a bug instead. Yeah. Yeah. Great mouth feel. <laughs> Yeah. It's like the opening in Shrek. Fried maggots is a is a death metal band. <laughs> maggots are actually uh, the nickname for Slipknot fans. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Who's taking first watch? Uh, yeah. Wit can. We didn't we'll eat. watch with you if you'd like. Sure. Okay, and then you get to pick who's next. Then we'll go on a, oh, I guess if me and Mavly are both sleeping at the same time, we can't, I can't share my bed will. Okay. I think Lee would be uh, grumpily settling down for rest and kind of just saying, uh, just let me know when, kind of. Uh, Mavly, are you okay taking second watch? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, do you want to use my bedroll for first watch then? Oh, not all heroes wear capes. Thanks. Yeah. Just, you can warm it up for me. <laughs> It'll be extra cozy. Okay, so who's on first watch? Uh, yep. I can go on second watch with Madly if you don't mind um, gossiping a bit more tonight, Madly. Oh, yeah. yeah. I need, Eat Edie I need and Wid. Oh, Edie. Sorry. I need to know more about um, that 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 affair you were talking about. I, I still don't quite believe it. All right. So first watch. What are Edie and Wid doing during their watch? Uh, Wood is going to take out her wool and she's going to continue to, to knit more socks. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say that's an incredibly stimulating activity, but I'll, I'll accept it. It is stress relieving, though. 
Uh -huh. It also is stimulating because I used to knit in class to keep myself awake. And I have to tell you that it works. <laughs> I went okay. to all of you and across the classroom. Um, you, I also stabbed you myself with the needle to. to we had you recover three stress damage, so I will mark that off for you. Thank you much. Uh, what is Edie doing on watch? He's going to um, take a little minute to um, take a minute to offer a little prayer to uh, Soligon and then try to. Uh, just try to do some breathing exercises, try to uh, take in the fresh air or as close as we can get to it. Try okay. To so yeah, there's definitely, not, there's definitely not any fresh air in the vicinity. Most of the air here is stagnant and um, kind of filled with that smell of old smoke. Um, I will... Uh, that's a that's a one. So you recover two stress. Thanks. Not a, not Thank a great you. roll, but every at this every point helps. every every point counts because many of you are very close to that one hundred threshold. If anyone has any sort of container, Wood will also cast uh, create uh, water and will create fresh water for everyone to have. I do. I also do. Okay. Topped up and fresh. Um, I so, could also. I need oh, ED and WID to make Constitution saving throws to stay awake. Uh, WID has an eighteen. Okay, that is good enough. That's an eight. That is an eight. <laughs> um, because you're like meditating. I would like Wid to make a perception check to see if she even notices that you've fallen asleep. 16. Okay. I think Wid with 16 would probably notice that after like an hour, um, Edie hasn't moved and her, her head is like slowly moved down from like a neutral straightforward position to like chin and chest. Uh, Wid will change the cadence of how she's knitting into a different kind of uh, tattoo to see if uh, that will kind of shake Edie awake because it's not as consistent. It appears that Edie has fallen asleep. Okay, if that doesn't work, then she will go shake her shoulder. All right, Edie, you wake up. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Everything okay? So far. I'm so sorry. I, I I don't know. Maybe it's all the stress of uh, this place finally getting to me. Uh, I apologize for not staying up as well as I should have. This place is enough to get to anyone, and I'm pretty sure we've all fallen asleep on watch at this point. So uh, definitely understandable, but let me know if I can help you stay awake. Do you have any, uh, can you make any coffee? You can make plants and things. Uh, well, I can't just create it out of nothing, but I can see if I have maybe any sort of stimulants, but I don't want to stop you from sleeping on next watch. Um, I do have some mint. I don't know if that would wake you up. It's slightly stimulating. It calms your mint stomach. Mint is a stimulant, yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll give it a shot. Thank you. No. It's really very kind of you. You can make it right, some tea, so but it's nice just to kind of chew the leaf, too. I'll so you spend some time and... That might keep me occupied. Uh, I'll gladly accept a... Uh, mint leaf and chew on that okay great and the the rest of the watch seems to go without problem 
uh, who, finally a successful watch. <laughs> who are Edie and Wid waking up? Uh, Wid's going to wake up Mavly and then take the bedroll. Okay. Uh, okay, we're good. Okay. Yeah. And then I think uh, Nona also wanted to. All right. Uh, I'll go wake Nona up. All right. <sighs> you know, it's a couple hour sleeps are just they're just they're like fake naps they're like snaps cheater naps they're they're appetizers it's worse <laughs> appetizers <laughs> appetizers sound good <laughs> so bad it's like the, when you order something and you think it's going to be good but no like that guy that works for insert name of tavern keeper mm -hmm. Is there when instead of him there, and you think you're getting his like deep fried green beans, but no, you get these soggy, floppity. <sighs> yep, yep. It's because like he doesn't boil lot. them first, and then and then oven, oven cook them. Yeah, then there's no blanching or anything. I guess I don't. Nothing know. worse than a soggy green bean. Right, I'm telling you. See, she gets it. <laughs> Go yeah. to sleep. Uh, <laughs> I will, I will, before that, I'll actually give each one of you a mint leaf and be like, it, it helped us to do these during our watch if you're starting to feel sleepy. Thank you. And then, and then I'll go to sleep. Okay. I wonder about her sometimes. She's got these like leaves that she's picked and she's had them in her pouch for like days. Do you think she has some kind of like stasis spell? How is it so fresh? I don't understand. I'm imagining a tiny garden. I, I think these leaves are probably dry. Right. <laughs> no, no. You let us have this. Don't you take this from me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. You can have it. Thanks. Like man. a tiny garden. I, I like right that. Inside, very, very little like fairy kind of thing with a baby itty bitty hoe. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of hoes, who was in the shed? Oh my God. Becky, you don't even know. So, and we will continue to gossip about the townspeople for a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd like okay. to. Um, it was do... definitely not your granddaughter. Don't worry. I don't well, think now I'm concerned. Your family is really big. No, I haven't seen her since you chased off that one kid from school. You looked at him, and that boy has yeah. been gone since. I thought I saw him actually pack up and leave town. Well, I saw him litter once, so. Yeah, well, I mean, we can't have that impeding on the whole name of Nona Ellie. Mm -mm. Nope. Look, litter. So, litter. It's like one of the worst things you could do. So let me ask you, you two a question. Yeah. Um, will, will Mavly and or Nona end up getting sick of the other one at some point and just stop talking or we're faking it really well right now see <laughs> i think we're faking it really well i think okay as long as we can like shit talk then we're good yeah at, um, if at some point things sure. do kind of you know, get a little I, I don't know is anything going to get brought up at any point like i i guess we could hey you know when everybody else is awake you are sniping at me a lot. Mm. And I find it problematic. So just, just I, I, I need you to not panic and maybe not do the high and mighty thing all the time, not all the time. Like, mm -hmm. why can we sit like this and be fine? But as soon as other people are watching, you're all like, man, Mavly. No, Mavly, don't do this. I feel it just makes my heart sad. Sorry, I'm sorry, Mavly. I don't. I do see what you're talking about. I don't really know why. Like, just... I I feel like I feel like you need to know that I've kind of seen myself in more than mirrors, and and I know that you might see me as kind of walking a path between shadow and light and you know I might have stumbled more than you're comfortable with but I have yet to lose myself Nona so you just 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 a little faith and a little less suspicion in front of God and country I appreciate that 
Okay. Maybe I, Tai Chi. I do, I do feel reassured. Yeah, we can do some Tai Chi, actually. And then she'll like bring out her set, her incense. This was really nice last time. You want to do some more incense yeah. stuff? Let's we can that. add some rosemary to it. I went to this place once and they had rosemary, lavender, and lemon burning at the same time. Oh my and God. it was a thing of glory. That sounds amazing. But now that I'm thinking about it, if you actually change how you're acting or interacting, would that feel weird? People might get suspicious and it might be really fucked up. So <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, how about this? How about this? I will just bitch at everybody equally. Does that feel better? No, I think that would make every, you know what? Yeah, that's fine. Is that and then good? I can occasionally call you out on it. Yeah. What do you want me to do when you call me out on things? Have, uh, whatever feels natural. Because if I dictate something and it's weird, you know, we'll just we'll just go. It'll be fine. Okay. Well, you don't have to dictate. I'm just throw me an idea. Just don't hit anybody. Because I've seen what happens when you hit people. It's. I only I mean, hit people if I think they're going to hurt somebody else. No, no, I've seen you take a warhammer and literally split a creature. I can hit a blunt object in half. But if I if I think that one of the one of if I feel like someone's been like possessed, like she says all this, like possessed. Well, uh, then then I will try and stop them. Yeah, you to bless you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh. Uh. Did you hear that? Wid sneezed. Is that a sign? I'm going to stare at Wid for a little bit. Has she snored at all yet? I think I heard a snore. I definitely didn't hear any. I mean, she does normally snore very loud. What if that's not Wid? Look, it's only not Wid if she starts attacking people. And that's all I know. And then I'll attack her back. That's just how it is. Yeah, but, but, okay, okay. You know, it's fine. Everything. But what if it's not Wid? Okay, but what if it wasn't, like, Sister Cavern's fall and she started attacking people? Then we attack her, right? Same thing here. But then Quinn at one point attacked Sister Cavern's fall. That's and true. And you've attacked Sister Cavern's fall. Did I? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but only after she attacked other people. You know what? I'm. There's right? a lot of. Was it? Holy shit, Ellie! Who are you right now? You don't even remember what you've done. What if you're not Ellie? Okay, you know what? We're just taking it too far. Look, I don't have to remember everything. Uh, to be myself. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're both over two hundred. You know. Are you are you implying something? I mean, they say after year 50, your mind starts to like, you know, it, it stops growing, right? What? what? You know what? Uh, how about we just sit kind of close to Wid, but not real close, because she might turn into a bear and eviscerate us and hope that she actually snores. Oh. Oh, she just snored. Ah, okay, okay. Wow. Um. I would like Mavly and Nona both to make your constitution saves. Yeah. Um, feel <laughs> feel free to do so at advantage. <laughs> okay, thanks. Badass. For that Badass. kind of hilarious banter. Wan random wandering. Thank you. Uh, okay, oh, not natural advantage. 20. That's oh, wow. Nice. I got an 18. All oh, right. Good. So both of you managed to complete your watch uneventfully. Think God, we're two for um, two. Who, God. Who, who are they? Who are Nona and Mavly going to wake up? Let's not see. Wid. Not Wid. No, Wid already not did the Wid. thing. <laughs> Wid already did the thing. So we've got. Let's see. Um, we have we Lee, got... Edie, and Quinn. Lee, and Edie, Edie looked like. Did Quinn also? Oh no. I thought that. Um, so. Lee and Quinn could maybe do one, and then Sudi might be able to do a solo since she has inspiration right now. Oh, yeah, do a solo. 
<laughs> I don't like that. Well, then who's going to do a double? Whoever looks the least awful. Or somebody could just do a little little extra. But yeah, let's. Uh, I, I, Quinn was super exhausted. That's true. I mean, do do you want to wake up, Sudi and Lee? And Lee, maybe. Yeah. And then kind of go from there, I guess. You know, this yeah. could totally be someone else's problem. If we wake up Lee and Sudi, they can make their own decisions, and we can go to bed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Which one do you want to wake up? I'm a little scared of the one with the extra long pokey stick. I can wake up Sudi, but then oh, you yes. have to go wake up Lee who has the talking pokey stick. <laughs> okay, that seems fair. Lee. Okay. Lee. I gotta get closer, don't I? Fuck, okay. Sudi, it's time to wake up. Is she Lee. waking up? Rumbles in her sleep and doesn't. Not from a whisper. Wake up. Uh, <laughs> Neither of them wake up. <laughs> I'm. I'm gonna cast press to digitation and make it kind of kind of chilly inside of Lee's bed roll. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you do to your grandchildren? <laughs> to wake up? So is Nona is shaking her now? Yeah. Okay. okay. Speaking from experience, Lee definitely wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she would like toss and like agitate ah. so, I then like sit up suddenly. Good her morning. Sudi also <laughs> wakes with a start and her hand flops to her side as if she's reaching for something, but there's nothing there. Why Did it, it flop cold? to the side and like accidentally hold Nona's hand? Maybe. She <laughs> <laughs> looks at her and pulls it away. <laughs> All right, and with the beginning of the third watch, I think that's where we will call it for tonight since it's 9.45-ish. Uh, and we will pick up next time on Lee and Sudi's watch. All watch.